Wednesdays. It's 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which means it's the Bonfire, Comedy Central Radio, Sirius XM 95. I'm Dan Soder. That's Big Jay Okerson. We are in Casa de... Hits one. <laughs> Hits <Casa> uno. <laughs> Casa de Fugelsang. The Fugelsang Hits Lab. Um, yeah, the Beats Laboratory. We've moved down the street from the Opie's Broom Closet. Um, yeah, we're getting used to it. It's Being nice. Fucking, by the way, uh, have you noticed? Power strip still going strong. Yeah. Recycle bin. The pylon still there. Recycle bin. I. Pylons and pylons. All I needed to sit where I sit was a computer. Which, by the way, there's a monitor. There's there's a Space 4 computer that's coming. But it's not here still. Yeah. But st- but st- 20, 20 minutes. 20 minutes recycling bin. 20 minutes is a recycling bin. Just here. saying pylon. By the way, the recycling bin is packed. Look at this. <laughs> it's a trash bin. It's I mean, not a it's, fucking recycling. There's no recycling happening. It's all recycling, actually, if you look. It's just different kinds. Don't under... There's a That's, can. No, there's trash in there. You think? Go throw it. I'll go through the trash. I don't give a fuck. I'm a dumpster diver. That's trash. This is how I put my baby through high school. Get the cans out. This is all trash, dude. There's some paper in here. Oh, that's fun. Hey, while you're sifting around. Oh, that's trash. <laughs> oh, that's a, we were, ah, that's a used condom. Me and Mike Vinoy were laughing last night. We have a Russian superintendent. This is going to make you laugh, especially because we have a Russian superintendent, and you love that I love, I love, I love mocking that His name is, his name is Bob. His name is Bob, and uh, they give Well, his real name's like Yerge or something. Yeah, of course. His they, American name's Bob. He gets tickets. He personally gets tickets if the recycling for the building isn't done. Uh, wait, him himself as a person. Him as a human being. Number one, he has to deal with. Oh, so he hates recycling. So no, it's not that. It's just that he basically asks like, everyone, like, "Hey, please, like, actually, like, just recycle." If you right. recycle, please, plastic, uh, metal, put with metal, <laughs> plastic, plastic, tank scraps, please put with tank scraps. <laughs> We're talking, I'm talking about his whole family. Goes, Mrs. Bob is upstairs, freezing cold. I also have same problems as you in building. <laughs> yeah, the funny story. We are not different. <laughs> I have same problems as you in building. <laughs> My son, Bobinskov. <laughs> <laughs> Russian people date, but does he show any emotion around you? Uh, no, he's never uh, yeah. shows emotion. But he does. But he uh, he was telling in separate conversations. He talked to me and Mike Fenoy yesterday, and gave us both the same story. But he goes, these kids they just recently didn't renew their lease. They kind of kicked them out. These young twenty-something year old dudes. Okay. Party, the party dudes, party dudes, but also they never recycled. So he had to go through because that's the millennial. We're, we're breaking the rules of Earth. So he tells me, he goes, he goes, these two kids sounds I, like a shitty Capri Sun commercial. He's like these two kids. I go up there, I ask them, I said to them, I go, please, you see ticket. I'm asking you, please, to recycle. I don't care what you're saying. There's no way I'm going to change plastic. <laughs> and, uh, is that twenty? No, he goes. He actually they go. They go. I don't know, Bob. I mean, we'll do our best. That was his response. That's and it's like, so great. So the next time they didn't do it, he put the actual stuff they didn't recycle right in front of their door, which became like a thing. Like those guys were really complaining about that. But he he, he did get nailed like fourteen hundred dollars a ticket. Jesus. It's just a lot. And then I just imagine they don't listen that time. And then one time they come out and he's just smoking a cigarette in the stairwell. He goes, "Are you familiar with what Kosovo was? <laughs> it was." Uh, a bicycle. But he does. I don't care. I'm going out drinking. <laughs> I watched my older brother, Sergei, get ripped apart by bullet shrapnel. Sergei is my partner in beer pong, brah. I watched his last breath leave him. <laughs> and they said if there was only one way to recycle that life, I would have <laughs> my brother. <laughs> <laughs> Sergey <laughs> just stabs him under the under the jaw. Where he's like, <laughs> he's holding his head into the knife. Um, there has been vacancy in building. <laughs> you don't think it's fishy that those kids didn't renew their lease? No, no, they got they did, booted out. Did they get booted out, or are they fucking sink? No, they the got bottom? booted uh, out. They got booted out. For I just sure. imagine it's going to be like some woman showing up. Like, have you, have you oh. seen my son? My <laughs> son lived in this building, and he is gone. And the building manager's name is uh, Ostop, and he's like a Russian dude, too. Oh, but he's, but, they're, but they're, neither of them are like scary Russian dudes. But Bob just made me laugh yesterday because he, he did like a like Def Jam comedy. <laughs> what, like, Russian Def Jam? Yeah. So he was just, oh, yo, he goes, women be shopping. He goes, you know, he goes, and I'd be out there. He goes, recycle. I have on gloves, 
Uh, he's humiliating. He goes, I dig through garbage. He goes, I find, uh, looking for paper cups, I see condom. I, I find condom. He goes, I'm a grown-ass man. <laughs> That's so great. I'm a grown-ass man. I don't care what I do. I'm a proud, <laughs> independent man. Do you want to get with this? Uh, dude, you better put it together. Box. I hate I hate making you a jukebox, but if you could do Def Jam comedy as, oh, as a fucking Russian guy. Oh, you know how bitches in Moscow be. They all got their asses out. Like, you play hockey? You're like, you cold-ass bitch. You know I'm in the mafia. <laughs> get you out of here, you narrow-ass hoe. Oh, with your flat-ass face. What? <laughs> Are you man, woman? I don't know. You <laughs> bitches. Uh, seriously, though. Seriously. Government is great. Government great. You know who's not great? Those bitches over in St. Petersburg. <laughs> coming over here like, hey, I heard you know. Sir, I know you know a couple Red Wings. It's like, bitch, I know your Red Wings, you bloody ass pussy. Ah! <laughs> this is how you fuck stool. Black kids, <laughs> black kids would get time out. Yeah. <laughs> Russian kids would get timeouts from hoping that ass. <laughs> Don't have sex with woman in co without condom, or else you common her. That's how you have children. But then you just kill her, throw her in river. You know when bitches pussy be stinking? Yeah. I know you bitches know which one of you have stank eyes pussy. Like Western culture inflecting us. You go down there and give her the finger test, and it, you pull back up and you're like, Ooh! Bitch, I didn't know you were part cod. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Are you making salmon? <laughs> the best one is, I ain't scared of you. I'm not scared of you. I'm not scared of you, motherfuckers. I'm, I'm not scared of you, motherfuckers. <laughs> the Russian Bernie Mac. <laughs> I, I ain't scared of you. What's going on with all these police beatings? Hamburger. Ham <laughs> Hamburger. Hamburger ain't having it. <laughs> Shucky ducky, you know what's Shucky up. Shucky ducky, quack quack. <laughs> That's fucking great. Um, and then you go, <laughs> we'll do more Russian like the shtick comedy. Uh, just uh, well, we the could... clock struck two. I dropped my goo. I dumped the beach on the next block. Low. Instead of get her, instead of Andy's favorite catchphrase, get her done. It's just make it happen. <laughs> I want documents into country. You know what I do? Make it happen. Make it happen. <laughs> um, we were talking about your the men in your building going missing, but outside before the show, we were talking about who took Johnny, the documentary on Netflix. Just before we jump into that, yeah, because I just want to while it's fresh. I want to. We say we can say that. Oh, we, we can. Yeah, no, no, we can. We can say what happened on Monday's show and how we got in legal trouble. Oh, we can. It's so great. We got to cease and desist, right? <laughs> yeah. From, uh, from from the SoundCloud clip that we put up uh, with the uh, Dan Soder. <laughs> By the way, it's been my favorite things to have. I'm so happy I have it in an email because uh, Dan Soder singing Crash Test Dummies was so dead on. <laughs> We got copyright infringement. You got to cease and assist. Yeah. They, you fucking drilled it so hard. They thought I was Brad so Roberts. Hard. They thought I was Brad Roberts, lead you, singer of Crash Test Dummies. Can you skip to the middle, Lou? I want to hear him do the part he didn't do. Oh, yeah, I got it. Well, you got to let me in. Bo. So they, we were trying to, I tried to tweet it out. I retweeted the tweet, and then I went to SoundCloud, and I was like, Christine, it's not working. And she's like, yeah, something's up with SoundCloud. And then we get on a conference call with Comedy Central. They go, guys, we got to cease this. <laughs> but that's so, no, like, Allison Chains wasn't hitting us up all angry about me going, wah, 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 wah. The Lane Staley wah, wah. estate is in contacting us. But Crash Test Dummy, what do we say? We find the guy's name? Brad Roberts. Brad Roberts. I just imagine Brad Roberts is just listening to all radio at all times. Times to see when he's mentioned. <laughs> it's like, we got a live one. There's a comedy show on Sirius XM called The Bonfire. Today was pretty exciting. They, they sang my old song on The Bonfire. It turns out it was Dan and we had to shut him down. Oh, dude, that's going to be uh, copyright. If you're able to come to the uh, to the live show, our next live show. We're going to have a pretty good surprise be, for you. Be there. <laughs> Because that's just going to happen. Just be there. Just, um, just take my word for it. <laughs> if you're, and be there. That's, that's, if you're uh, in the area, you might want to be there. I, uh, I just got to gotta tip my hat to you over and over. As you crushed that. I knew you did. <laughs> but you crushed that song so hard. Could I just tell you That this? it legally had to be removed because they just thought you were ripping, <laughs> you were ripping it off. 
Like if they were any sort of more popular, yeah, that would be the clip that like where the like Judas Priest and yeah. Journey, where they found the little Filipino kid, or like, in, in Rockstar, the Mark Wahlberg. Yeah, two movie. hot chicks would be like, you should check out this kid Dan Soder. He rips, he rips a pretty good Brad Roberts. I don't know if I know Brad's like super fucked up on drugs right now, and you. <laughs> <laughs> I know Brad's in a fucking heroin spiral somewhere in the Bronx. This song, if you guys, you guys really get, the songs need to be out there in the so world. So every time we drive to your house to score some junk, <laughs> Tiffany always has me listen to this stupid radio show. But they were doing your song, and there's this guy who sounds like Brad. <laughs> I'm fine. I can sing. I can sing. The, the I'm going to sing. No one's going to take my place. Who's going to take The guy goes, I'll listen to this bullshit, man. But I was Brad's guitarist for one year. And I know for a fact there's no one out there with a voice like that. I've seen everyone perform. <laughs> I've never heard a voice like Brad Roberts ever before. If this guy can sing like Brad Roberts, I'll sign him right now <laughs> to the entire carnival tour. <laughs> Let me hear it, baby. He's just in leather pants. <laughs> the drummer on. the drummer for Crash Test Dummies is all super metal. He's and he's just kinda of smoking a cigarette for the intro and then when it kicks in like once there was a like, he, he looks up he goes, It's him. Oh my god. <laughs> We found him. <laughs> it's the Scion. It's the one they talked about. <laughs> Bernard, gas up the bus. Get the van ready. We gotta have another. S We're gonna have one more sleeping in here. <laughs> how far's the, how far's the drive to Des Moines? We can do it in the morning. We can do it in the morning. Both boy and girl were right. That's gonna be. In everyone's head, also, by the way. Um, so speaking, yes, we were talking about... Oh, speaking of outside. Des Moines, it all comes back to who's... I think the name of the documentary is Who Took Johnny... Who Took Johnny on Netflix. On Netflix. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're going to watch it... I watched it, it on a uh, funny comedian, uh, hilarious comedian, Tim Dillon's uh, recommendation. I watched it. Yeah, me too. And then I called Tim Dillon because I had a lot of questions. Yeah, me too. If you are going to watch it, change the... Is this the trailer? Yeah. Here's the trailer for Who Took Johnny, and then we are going to ruin the movie if you haven't watched it. <laughs> so you might want to get ready to play back Mondays before they take down that episode for copyright infringement. <laughs> Who Took Johnny? On September 5th, 1982, 12-year-old Johnny Gosh disappeared off the living room. If you have our son, we'll work with your demands because we want him back. Hey, this is uh, the kidnapper. I got Johnny. No crime scene. He just vanished. My husband and I feel we must do what we humanly can as his parents. There was a lot of fear. They didn't catch the perpetrator. Something like this is going to Just for the record, Johnny Gosh is real fuckable looking. I mean, soup's <laughs> cute. <laughs> and at that moment, when our eyes met, I knew I was going to hear exactly what happened to my son that day. We have years. no idea what oh, it's sorry. like to look for your missing child. It is hell on earth. Yeah, 1982, he was taken. Sunday, September 5th, approximately 6 a.m. 12-year-old John Gosh had been delivering papers in this affluent neighborhood of West Des Moines. That was the last time he was seen. The parents believe the boy is How alive is and has been kidnapped. Johnny... It's a long ass trailer. We're waiting for you. To oh come Jesus! Home. It's only halfway through. Good room. lord! All right, we well, yeah, get the cut point. It. Yeah, you get the point. Uh, this kid, kid was, was taken. 1982, gone, straight off the streets. Well, that was what we no do. crime scene. You vanished. <laughs> you just straight vanished. One more question, officer. <laughs> um, but oh, I watched the documentary last night. If you haven't, it's about kidnap. Jay, you watched it too. I watched it. It's about kidnapping, but then it turns into something else. So shut off if you don't. Spoiler alert. If you don't want a spoiler alert, turn back in in five minutes. Ready? Go. Okay, he's in a pedophile ring. <laughs> <laughs> he got taken by a bunch of pedophiles. That Allegedly. Okay, first I'm not off. ready to point fingers at these guys just yet. You don't, yeah, the bang web that he got taken into? No, yeah, he got taken into a, uh, yes, I'm like, fuck circle of weird, like, rich, wealthy people. Well-to-do people but then in the, the Iowa scene. Yeah, but then it's it's like a, about a, a pedophile ring in Omaha, but then they they just kind of stopped talking about it in the documentary. 
Yeah, it like gets you weird. feel like you feel like the people who are in power who have that pedophile ring were like, "Eh, we'll let you get away with a little bit of it, but then uh, we're gonna fucking ruin your life." They're, it also seems like once in a while they just like released the kids. Well, that's while. that's the part we were talking about. Is in the documentary, she says that he shows up at her doorstep. You don't see it at all, but he you said. Don't I guess it was a couple years before the documentary was made. It was it was 2006 or 97 I think he showed up. Yeah, he popped. Yeah, he popped in and he was like, you know, I was like, "Hey mom. Hey, <laughs> what's up, mom? We're getting boo food in the basement. Yeah. I don't know, ma. Hey mom, I was in Colorado taking some dick I didn't want. But I'm back now. Can't really move in cuz they'll kill me. Can they say my I learned on the road. A lot of guys with handlebar mustaches love boo-foo and kids. <laughs> yeah. Turns out tight young bo- butthole is a delicacy. <laughs> There's some very rich men that'll pay for it, and that's why I've been gone. Anyways, how's my room? Is it still the same? <laughs> I'm going to grab my Ferrari Test Roast poster and jam out. <laughs> yeah. Listen, I got a sick-ass kiss sweatshirt I had when I was 11, and I know I'm 32 now, but I'm looking for it. I'm 32, but I've been living in a trunk in a basement, so I'm pretty emaciated. I could probably still fit in it. <laughs> yeah, I, he, he puts it on from his mind. Mom. Yeah, he puts it on in front of his mom, and he goes, "Still got it, kiddo." I mean, I know you can see my sh- my <laughs> scapula in the back. It's from grade school. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Anyways, good seeing you. I'm gonna go play now. Kisses her on the cheek and runs out. She was and he left, and he was like, "If anyone finds out, like I'll be killed." I thought it was actually only a few years before the doctor was it 2006. Look it up. I think it. I thought it was like. The well, here's the why. Here's why I think it's 97 because the mom reveals the story on Sally Jesse Raphael. <laughs> and so I'm like, that's mid '90s. That he came to her. That he that he yeah that he went to the house. She that, did. That's how she reveals it on the documentary. They show that clip where she's like talking about seeing him. She's like, it's in the eyes. I saw the eyes. She's she, like, I knew it was him. And I knew it was him. And it's just some guy he that talked he, to her for like a ha- for like for an, an hour a, for an hour. And then he's like, I can't stay here, or else they're gonna kill me if they find out I'm here. So I gotta leave. That's so. That's where the story. That's where I. Well, they, and they, it kind of ends there, and I was just kind of like, "What?" I'm like, but I kind of understand the parenting aspect of like. I mean, I'm not a parent, but she said she would rather just him survive, like live and survive and have his own life, than ruin any of that. That's why she's like, I didn't chase him, or I didn't want to. I didn't want to put him in in danger. By why? Him. Because he he becomes like that guy. Well, I guess like he had his own life. Like he escaped, and they started looking out for each other. But he could never go back to his family because they were going to be monitoring his family to see if he came back but I then, but kill then, your parents sam but then yeah that's exactly what it was <laughs> but then go to the authorities uh, no but i think these people were more powerful than the authorities that's why there's never been a crime scene that's why the fbi was like wouldn't touch this case because you watch the documentary and they the say fbi that, just keeps going away from it the fbi keeps fucking like, i don't know what you're talking about yeah and then remember when they sit down with that guy from the department of justice and they're like yeah it's one thing the johnny gosh case do not ask about it and they're like oh okay yeah, he's like, I was told we were not be talking about anything with the Johnny Gosh kid. And he goes, uh, this camera's not rolling, right? That's that's uh, that's some prime little butt boy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean, I had a little taste at uh, the Christmas party, <laughs> and it is top shelf boy butt. He goes, I mean, before it got pretty stepped on. I mean, right <laughs> now it's like guacamole after you leave it in the fridge for four days. But I mean, uh, <laughs> it was freshly made. I mean, leave the pit in the bowl. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what that means. For Christ's sake. It's so goddamn funny. Really? You work those Caminos, Christine says. Dude, that- I know how to make guacamole better than anyone in this room. And I know that's how you keep it fresh, but I mean, like, in sexual terms, I didn't know what that meant. Oh, yeah, nothing. But don't you ever challenge my guacamole. I just want to put the... Look at me in the eyes, I want to fresh by putting the, the seed back in. Look at me right in my eyes. Mm-hmm. Don't you ever challenge my guacamole skills. Are you sick at it? So dope. Have you ever made it, <laughs> have you ever made it outside of Dos Caminos? Ah, once there was a kid who could make guacamole right at the table and then he got to quit there he became a radio host who got challenged uh christine throws in a mean guacamole but i mean that's where we met but it is it is the dos camino recipe she's from the she's from the dos caminos dojo yeah yeah she has the same fighting style. <laughs> By the way, everything she makes that she has kind of like, I have this thing. She really presents it like a family recipe, and it's always some bullshit hack way she found. That's everyone really goes, fun. everyone really gives her like, I did for two years. I'd give her all the credit in the world of like, this is pretty great. So I'll tell you what, Christine can't can barely fry an egg, but she makes a, a spinach dip that'll knock your dick in the dirt. Mm-hmm. And, then, and then one day she goes, can you grab me the ingredients? Uh, for the, I'm gonna make the spinach dip, and I'm like, hell yeah, I'll grab the ingredients. What do you need, spinach cream? Because what else, baby? I go because I'm gonna get you the ingredients, but the magic's in your hands, clearly. <laughs> yeah. 
And she goes, you know, get this, and I'm getting cilantro, whatever the shit I'm getting for it. Yeah. And I go over water chestnuts. I'm like, I, I guess this, this bitch is brilliant. <laughs> I, never, I, I don't even know what water chestnuts were before she yeah. told me to get them. <laughs> I go get water chestnuts. Uh, she goes, get me a packet of Noor, like vegetable mix seasoning. I'm like, you got it. You got make, I'm like, is that a cut in the corner? Probably. But I can't, she can't make her own seasoning. That's yeah. asking someone for a lot. She uses Noor. And then I call her and I go, hey, what else do you need here? Like, someone wasn't coming through on my phone. So I go, what else do you need? She goes, well, just look on the back of the Noor package. And that's all the ingredients you need. She just makes the shit off the back of the package. But it's the magic's in her hands. This was clear. I like, I like the fact that she tries to pass it off like an old family recipe. She's like, this is my abuela's guacamole. You're like, you're Armenian. <laughs> I know, but my, mi abuela. my abuela told me to make it for you. Do you actually do the, the two peppers when you make it? Because I never do that. Listen, first and foremost, I have a black belt. And it's guacamole. <laughs> Does Bruce Lee kick with all the power in his foot? Probably, if he's alive. <laughs> yeah, both peppers. I dice them. And I use Serranos. Yeah, like I Like a real quarters. juice. Guacamole. Guacamole. The worst was um, <clears throat> when you'd have to make guacamole, because we used to do it at the table. But then, like... Oh. I mean, <laughs> it's, so, the hardest... it's so humiliating, too. I mean, it's not, Dude, it's not have to do a big it at the deal, table. but it just is, sort of. I think the thing that People was... People talking more... around you while you're oh. fucking punching avocados. Oh, oh, also when you're smashing onions into a mocajete, <laughs> and they're starting to come up, and you're like, you're starting to tear up, and you're like at the table, and they're Your like... guys' friendship really makes me happy. Not even though... It was Midtown, so it was like four guys like, hey, bro, <laughs> seriously, that stock is going to smash dick tomorrow. Do uh, you guys want to do Coronas and shots of Patron? Hey... Hey, large man crying into that Mexican steel bowl. Bring us Coronas, you fucking loser. I'll be right there. Um, sure. Hold on. Hey, Fernando, can you finish this guacamole? I gotta run to the bar. Who took Johnny? Who took him? Oh, it says he showed back up in 1987. So what? it was just like five years after he was abducted. Four years. Hey, mom, summer camp's pretty sweet. A lot of butt fucking. But anyways, <laughs> I learned how to make my own. <laughs> Much more man boy love going on than I pictured. I mean, it's like super Greek, but at the same time, like I know how to build my own tent. They lured me in with archery and then painted a bullseye on my butthole. I so just, I just love the thought of her being surprised by him coming home and him running upstairs, grabbing something and kissing her on the cheek as he leaves. <laughs> Just want to grab my sleeping bag. Back to buttfuck camp. Bye, mom. <laughs> <laughs> Be home for dinner. Will do. Uh, Tostitos. Can't make any promises. Tostitos pizza rolls. When you need them for right when he walks back in the door for being trapped in a pedophile ring for seven years. Mmm, <laughs> what's in the stove, mom? It's Tostitos. Oh, that's, by the way, you just nailed it right there. What? They have to be in the stove. Fuck yeah. If you're coming home from butt fuck camp, <laughs> it better be, you better not microwave and give me some soggy fucking pizza. Yeah, that's gonna better pop be in my, pop in my mouth like lava cone. I want the grease inside. Yeah, dude. Fucking, can, oh, can we have Tostino's pizza rolls tomorrow? I'm so bad. I want them. After, after um, the show. So hard. I want them. I, want I uh, so hard. I, I had Christine tried something in Philly this week. I guess it's a Philly thing. Okay. Philly, South Jersey area. Yeah. But, um, I'm sure there's other versions of it other places, but it we've been back like strict hardcore dieting pretty much and, and running exerci and exercising because you're getting it since this day. And we it wasn't even a big thing we ate it wasn't even that big, but we just like it was so bad for you. We're just like we got to get our shit together, and that's a Panzerati. Do you know what that is? No. It's basically so picture like a small pizza, about the yeah. size of a small pizza. Okay. Fold it over. Done. Right. Yeah. In half, so it's like you know, it looks like almost like an empanada mm -hmm. sort of thing. Oh, we used and then to serve fucking deep fried. What? Then deep fried. So when you bite into it, you don't bite into it. You rip off a piece, just hot grease. Yeah. That hot grease, like in cheese and yeah. uh, and, and deep fried. Is there tomato sauce on there too? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. But you can get whatever you can get cheesesteak in it. You can get pepperoni in it. Yeah. I used to do this all the time. What about I used to eat them like that was like. Well, I had a cheesesteak for lunch, so I don't want to like overdo it. I don't want to get another cheesesteak, so I'll just get a Panzerati for dinner. Nice, dude. Can we get Panzer? Can we have a Panzerati Wednesday? I wish they would bring in a Panzerati here. But maybe we can just drive down one day. It's a two-hour drive, dude. It's not far, and we can do a pre-record. We can do, do a bonfire good, on the road to get to do a good Panzerati. Can we do a Panzerati run? As it'll an bl episode? it'll bl like, like Christine didn't even look. 
she liked it so much she didn't even like have like a positive reaction to it because right away she was like it's so i wish i didn't even know it's that good. Yeah, I was mad. I was How like, I could have gone my whole life it's not crazy. knowing this. It, it, it's deep fried you guys make pizza. It sound like, you guys make it sound like it's heroin, where you're like, I could have stopped a Coke. Have you ever had a Panzerati? Oh, yeah. Merc face. When you were over yeah, I went to college we, in that area. I had them oh. all the time. And you know that college diet, you just eat like a garbage yeah. dump. Whatever. And, and, oh. and the thing is, like, also, Panzerati's probably at that, when you were in college, probably four so bucks, five yeah, yeah. bucks. All right, so we need to do a bonfire on the road because we have a lot of truckers that listen to us. So we need to. Please, Mike, go down to Philly one day and just do an eating onslaught. <laughs> yeah, give, just go to just, Jacob. Can just you, go to hell one day? Can you clear with Comedy Central that we can do that? Because now that we're under tighter circumstances, and considering that legalities is upset with us already for nailing crash test dummies. Mm-hmm. Once um, there was this pizza. Just because we've been uh, not really fully addressing this lately, we should do it. And because Kevin from Florida is on the line, I want him to listen to us with us. Um, we should play a man and his dog episode. Well, let's let, here. Here's the deal, because I think Kevin's uh, got an impression. Kevin's, Kevin's got a Craig Glazer impression. So let's watch the latest. Mm-hmm. Let's not take Kevin's call now. Keep him on hold. Well, he's on. Face. He's on. Yeah, but we're gonna come back to you, Kevin. First, we're gonna watch the latest episode of A Man and His Dog. <sighs> that, by the way, now they're tweeting at us. Ooh. So oh. is that a Panzerati? Yeah. yeah, dude. It sounds like a shitty sports bike. Dude, it's look at the cheesesteak one. I got seven thousand dollars. I think I'm gonna go buy a Panzerati. <laughs> <laughs> Look, look at the cheesesteak one. Yo, bro, honestly, a Panzerati would be made ill in the Art. summer. My shirt off, I got a motorcycle helmet on, I'm riding around in my Panzerati. <laughs> <laughs> yo, I was getting my dick sucked in my Panzerati. This fucking pig pulled yo, me over. Yo, I swear to God, I was my Panzerati. I got the Panzerati, bam. <laughs> bam, bam, <laughs> bam, bam. Panzerati, Lotus. Spud out. There's actually four new episodes oh, since the last one so that we watched. So much content. So much content, but let's pick one now to watch for the we first break. We have April Macy, Nikki Glazer, Maria, Glazer. and acting oh, he, class. He talks about them. I, wanna, I, I wanna, think he just talks about them. I want to hear. I think I've I've seen the Nikki Glazer one. I was going to listen to the April Macy one. All right, let's do April Macy. This bim chewing on my hog, <laughs> <laughs> side of her mouth, so it doesn't break skin. There he is. There's the man. I think we're real. Yep. Welcome back to A Man and His Dog. It's actually doggies. With Junior, the miniature dachshund, and Coco, the chihuahua pup. I love them. They're my entire family. You know, I mentioned I own Stanford Sons Comedy Club. And if you want to see photos of a lot of the women I've talked about or people on uh, who talked about, get my book. What is it? King the of Sting. King of Sting. It's around Hold Australia. on, i got to toss one of these dogs across the room. The King of Sting. <laughs> you can get it. You think Amazon. I can fit one dog inside the other dog? <laughs> <laughs> It'd be like a combo, but with dogs. My books are so. Junior, don't eat that. You can't trust dogs. Cool, cool, cool. So I work with a lot of celebrities. And today, Lou, you better be coming up with Craig Glazer age, drops. Like Amy Schumer, Nikki Glazer, Sarah Silverman. But before them, there was a gorgeous girl. Hold on, can you back hair. it up, Christine? Because, uh,. Is he just talking about female? Because he says famous comedians, and then he starts talking about chicks. Well, because he's going to get into April Macy. Okay, sorry. Now that's good. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> that's perfect. Schumer, Nikki Glaser, Sarah Silverman. But before them, there was a gorgeous girl with red hair, and she used to dress up as a devil. She looked like a Playboy playmate. Her name was April Macy. Her name she is April Macy. Stanford. She's not dead, dude. And she came in with Josh Wolf, who was a regular on Chelsea lately. Oh. And I kind of thought those two had a thing, but I found out Josh was married. But guess what, Coco? That often doesn't matter. Anyway, they both stayed at a hotel across the street from Stanford's and smoked weed a lot. So I wanted to get April had such a great body. We got along. I knew she'd gone out with a lot of people in the industry, so I figured, why not me? I was cool, right? Wow. So... Um, He's proud driving around, and she agrees to go out with me that next oh. night, Friday, because she was there through Saturday, and we go to a casino. That was my come on the casino, because then you can throw around money, go in the bathroom. Wow. Whatever. You know, and then Coco would come. Then you could get him back to, you know, I had a really neat uh, condo, and I, what did I drive them? I had a new Porsche. I was just cooler than shit. Hi, right, Coco. So I for sure I'd locked her up. I was going to get this girl. It was going to be wild times that night. So we're driving to the club. We've been doing media. And it was freezing out. I mean, like 10 degrees. And April, being from L.A., didn't realize Kansas City was that cold. Dumb April, right? That's why her name's April, not winter. Anyway, so what? 
the machine. You get it, man. Check season humor. Uh, I throw out some season jokes. Boom. Throwing out a little season her humor. Pan is, her panties are off. Nikki Glaser is more of a fall bitch. If you don't know who Craig Glazer is, he's the owner of Sanford and Sons of Kansas City. Stanford. Stanford and Sons of Kansas City. Yeah, Sanford and Sons was a great show that I used to watch. <laughs> Uh, and, you know, I really haven't been out with anybody since then. But anyway, I told her that. we got to tell him that. So um, I said, let's stop by my condo. I think Kai's got a couple of jackets behind, unless you have behind in the closet. Sure enough, I open it, and April just goes, oh, my God, there's a fur coat in there, a little short fur coat. She goes, what is that? I go, it's fox. It's a fox coat. She goes, oh, my God. I okay, you want to know what you have to do for it? You have to take a piss on this newspaper. I killed that fox with my bare hands. Made it a coat. Funny story. I was banging a bim. Fox ran in the room. I'm like, only dogs watch. Crazy story. Dogs there. Bims. Foxes. Kill them. Skin them. Jacket. Boom, bing. Bang, boom. A lot, of, a lot of people don't know this. Use the dogs to hunt foxes. Johnny Dare. <laughs> take it. I got, you know, I'll never wear it. I mean, what am I going to do? She was on cloud nine. She was ready to drop her drawers right there. Wow. No such luck. She gets home that night to her hotel room, opens the jacket up, and there's a little small thing in there inside the coat. It said, um, do not wash, dry clean. The fur is pure rabbit. Phone rings. She goes, you're a major asshole. Why'd you tell me that was a box coat? I went, huh? She goes, that's rabbit, Craig. Do you think I'm that stupid? And by the way, it's shedding. You can forget tomorrow night. I go, what? She goes, you're just another asshole. I never banged her. She ended up dating the guy that owns the palms. They called the Maloofs. That became her boyfriend. And he bought her a real fur coat. Bastard. I mean... Th I mean, the guy is... Yeah, I'm going like, to give it his due. That's, uh, uh, so... He just... <sighs> So, I mean, the implication there is that April Macy would have fucked him for, Had a, for, fox a, coat. for a fox coat. Like, like she was back rubbing her bean in her hotel room like, oh, this is fox. Fox. What is this? Fox. Zipper Z. Fox. fox. Craig, I'm going to give it to Wait you. Wait a second. I love what are those floppy ears? No, <laughs> it's just made, this was supper. It's just made of actual rabbits. <laughs> it's just people the, together. Why is that lucky keychain on that jacket? <laughs> oh, my God. It's his foot. It's the foot. Oh, it's all feet. Oh, no. I'm not stupid. These are feet. This is Foot coat. <laughs> it's a coat it's just, of feet. Rabbit feet. It's just crazy for an owner of a comedy club to be like, I was going to bang her. She's <laughs> there. I'm going to bang her. She's so, doing you know, 20. I figure if you're a girl, you come to my club, I'm probably going to lay some pipe. <laughs> I got good. the Lotus. Your dog's doing, there. I'm doing seven up top. Then you're going to do 20. Then five on my cock. Five on my cock. Dog's there. <laughs> Bing bang. Johnny Dare. Lotus. Now, Kevin, let's hear your Craig Glazer. All right, listen, guys, it's been three weeks. I got this laser voice on my mind. My bim wife won't shut up about me. Stop doing it. I'm about to have throat surgery. I come home last night, throw on the ballers. Finale figure panties will be dropping. We got the rock on it here. Well, what do you know? The dumb bim takes off. No six for me. I didn't get laid. He sounds. You, you're you're almost there. You he's sound almost more. There, like, he, he sounds like his brother. He's a got. Lot. The, he's got the rant. He's yeah. got the rant down. Yeah, like, you've got the, You've got the character. Do us a favor, Kevin. Say, uh, we'll be right back. It's the bonfire and your best, Craig Glazer. Hey, listen here, boys. We'll be right back. It's the bonfire. Take it easy. <laughs> And now, back to the bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soder. Bonfire. Comedy Central Radio, Series XM 95. It's Tupac Wednesday. He passed away yesterday. Uh, was Yesterday was the anniversary of his death. I love the way he raps. I really do. I like the flow of what he does. But dare I say, yeah, this era of West Coast, and I like a lot of the songs still, very one trick pony on the beats. You're calling out Dr. Dre at Death Row Records. I'm calling out an older Dr. Dre. Whoa. Um, Whoa. No, no, no. I think, uh, don't you think? You don't agree with that at all? Um, I just, I really liked, I mean, this album. So many great songs, but, but, but I mean, if, if you took the fucking, if you took his voice out of this, when you'd be like, this could be a fucking, this could be a Daz Dillinger or a Snoop Dogg song or a yeah. corrupt. Do you know what I mean? It could be a dog pound, pound gangster gang. Yeah. Wow, 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 w
be wow 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 um and then John you know Cena this? John Cena took this song Can't See Me and made it into a giant thing but it was Tupac it's not this song no but he did the You Can't See Me mm-hmm. and those, I mean this is a Tupac song it came out way before John Cena was I think it's just a saying though well you can't see me so there you can't argue with me I just did it to you so now you can't see me where you at <laughs> well, are you here Jam right here I'm sorry you're on the other side of the glass oh, dusting God. with the sad cleaning lady mm-hmm. just gonna keep did you see on the Tupac biopic trailer um, There's a new one. Yeah, do you know the kid that played Notorious B.I.G. in the movie Notorious is playing is playing him in this too. Who's gonna be doing it's big. almost like it's a sequel. It's a crossover. Crossover promotion. Yo, what's gonna happen? Yo, pa, how can we say, how can we save the world? We can't even save ourselves. Hey, pa. Hey, pa. Well, all of a sudden, it's like get real sleepy when I'm at the corner seat of this couch. You all just want to take care of my kids and do good. Hey, can I put on another coochie sweater? I hope they I'll don't mad, do that. I'll be mad cold. I hope they don't do that with this Tupac story. What? Like, show the, show the piece of shit stuff and show the good stuff and show, but like... Oh, not make him... Let's not story. pretend that no point... Let's not pretend that at any point Tupac was some kind of Samaritan uh, fucking... Oh, you're talking about like, Notorious where uh, all dude, they that did was is... so frustrating. They just like, made him look like a great guy. I just want to be a good person, a good peep. <laughs> just... Mom, remember when, I, remember when I stole $20 for your wife? When I was a kid, here's 20 million. Boo, boo, hoo, hoo, hoo. Uh, boo, hoo, hoo, hoo. The only reason I saw crack was because I thought there was vitamins in it. <laughs> I was just trying to stop sickle cell anemia. I was trying to stop sickle cell. Anemia? I can say sickle cell anemia. Sickle cell anemia. Uh, hey Puff Daddy. Yo Puff, you know, yo Puff, can we start maybe a charity for like inner city kids to take cooking classes or something? Uh, yeah. You know what I'd like to do is set up some sort of program where kids in Brooklyn have a lot of American classic literature to read. I'm talking about Steinbeck. Uh, I'm talking about Ernest Hemingway. Puff, I told you, make my tour dates around my volunteer work at the old folks' home. I don't want to go on the road if them old people feel alone. I got to make sure that they feel comfortable. Oh, all y'all drinking Ensure. I got y'all some Dom P up in this piece. <laughs> yeah, so clearly produced to make him look like the best guy ever. Dude, they had before he takes the ride where he dies, they show him make phone calls. Uh, I think he calls his mom. Yeah. And he definitely they have him call Faith Evans to say, hey, Faith, I just uh, want to be good. I want to take care of my kids. I love you. And everything's going to be A-OK. <laughs> Nothing's going to feel pretty good. Nothing's going to go wrong tonight. They actually showed me a lot of love over here in L.A. Turns out it was all just a miscommunication. <laughs> and everything's OK. So if I die, you can definitely put this dialogue in a movie. I mean, it's going to be pretty sad, but you know. Okay. Anyways, I'm running out of space on your answering machine. <laughs> I gotta go die now. I mean, anywho, so, uh, <laughs> love you. Uh, yeah, I just checked my voicemail. Uh, turns out Biggie was the greatest man of all time. <laughs> uh, he told me he just wanted to take care of his kids. I just imagine, I just imagine P Diddy writing, writing this movie in just a penthouse that's just empty except for a table, and he's in white silk pajama bottoms, shirtless. And then the next scene, uh, I want Biggie to pick up a blind baby, kiss it, and the baby can see. But the baby can also talk, because then he's going to say, I can see, yeah. Uh, yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Nah. <laughs> that's what he does when he reads the script. Yeah. Can't stop, uh, won't stop, it's gripping. <laughs> in this scene, I want you to show a baby, uh, a baby in a mother's arms in a burning building, and I want to drop the baby down to, to, to B.I.G., and then, when you think, you know, he just saves the baby, the bitch gonna jump out the window too, and B.I.'s gonna catch her too. Uh, he saved the whole family. Isn't that a good scene? I, I can't write that, Sean. <laughs> That's not what happened. You know, I know, I'm just like, I'm very spitballing of ideas here that okay, I Okay, kick them out. Let's but do this it. Is a, this is an important one to me. Have yeah. we not, or have we acknowledged yet, the Amber Rose show is produced by Dr. Phil? Yes. Yeah, I think we acknowledged that. How is our executive joke about a guy being on <sighs> Amber Rose... 
Oh. Not Dan doing Dr. Phil. If you want to do a show where your crew <laughs> shows up, I'm fine with it. But Amber, I'm going to need to lick your puss from behind. Well, damn, if that's going to take my boy Brandon Jack off in the corner. Amber, I think you are talking to me in a very rude and disrespectful way, and I'm harder than ever. Lick it by my booty hole. Absolutely. <laughs> I think it's a great idea if we bring your business partner on the show. <laughs> I think I think your security should be right in the front row. This is Brandon, this is my medium. Hi, nice to meet you, Brandon. I'm Dr. Phil. What's up, motherfucker? Yeah. Okay. And this guy seems like he's big. I hope he's security. I don't talk. Hmm. <laughs> and scene. <laughs> uh, show all yeah. the conversations. Okay, okay. Dr. Phil, the pitch meeting. I mean, I don't know why he... I mean, you know, he's tr he's going to make a lot of money off it? Does it make money? Oh, of course. It's a make... Oh, he makes money, dude. They, they actually... I was talking to the Live Nation guy last week, and he said, like... Live Dr. Phil? No. Hello, <laughs> Cincinnati! It's been a while since I've been here. Y'all's attitude is Are y'all ready to rock and roll or what in here? <laughs> Are y'all pussies ready to thrash? Are there any whores out there deadbeat dads need talking to? Bring them up to the stage. I'm about to smack some sense into these <laughs> motherfuckers. It's Dr. Phil. It's Ooh. Dr. Phil, like You've never seen him. Watch him crush a car. <laughs> Dr. Phil rides the go 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 grave digger. <laughs> I got a pretty sweet deal with Live Nation where they book me at the same event as Grave Digger. I get in, smash some cars, and then I fix some people on stage. And what was the fucking, what was the dinosaur one? <laughs> oh, fuck the one that breathes fire? Yeah. Oh, god damn it. Carceratops? No. <laughs> Truck Rex. Truck Truck Rex. Yeah. Is that what it is? I think so. Hey, real quick, who's the stage manager? I'm not following Carosaurus. <laughs> oh, uh, actually, it's Truckosaurus. Okay. Whatever it is, I ain't going. And everyone knows I got the Chuck Berry rule. I will not go on stage until I get a brown paper bag of $10,000. But Dr. Phil, uh, I talked to the Live Nation guy. Dr. Phil, one of the, I mean, a lot of people who own private jets like lease them out. So last year on Oddball Tour, one of the ones we were on was Beyonce's plane. What? And then one of them, they said, was Dr. Phil's plane. I'm like, Dr. Phil has a fucking private it's, jet. It's the diagnosis one. I've also got <laughs> diagnosis two. <laughs> diagnosis one. Diagnosis one goes in the air. Diagnosis two goes in the sea. <laughs> Are you looking up his net worth? Is it estimated two hundred million. Well, he's got as much money now. See how much Diddy's got. I want to produce a movie about Biggie, but I only want it to be positive. I'm not going to fight this little dancey motherfucker. <laughs> Wow, five hundred fifty-four million. million. I mean, he's got. Like, I mean, he's got like a clothing line. Yeah. <coughs> Sean like, John. Yeah. Yeah, he's got not to be confused with Sean Paul. The great Jamaican. Singer. I got the right temperature. I got some sweatpants, send it and then and 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 sweatpants and things. I almost want to call my mom on her cell phone. I don't know if she still has it. To see if she has the ring back tone. Ring back tone. That was I remember just the when funniest I, thing in the world. I had uh, I actually had a Huey Lewis in the news ring back tone. I had Power of Love when I was doing check spots to stand up New York because Wayne called me and he left a message. Where he was like, "Hey, pal, it's Wayne." Love the callback. <laughs> Reminds me of high school. See if you want to do a check spot. I do not understand the call. I would never said a callback tone ever. But the fact that my mom's was fucking temperature by Sean Paul is yeah, great. Shows, oh, is this the top 100 richest rappers? P. Diddy, Dre, Jay Z, number three. P. Diddy's number one. Wait, that, wait Dr. Dre's number two. Russell even Simmons isn't a rapper, number one. Yeah, and number two, didn't Dr. Dre sign a billion dollar deal? Yes. Um, something like that. Isn't he the first billionaire? Eminem at number six. That's pretty strong. They said that. This is a horseshit list. I'm furious. This list is fucking straight up bullshit. This is some straight bullshit. I'm not list. wearing P. Diddy headphones. Yeah. Fucking it's, assholes. It's not Beats by Diddy. Fucking assholes. <laughs> you fuck. That's you the problem. I don't, even, I don't even go on the road if they don't have white carpet everything in my green room. Y'all heard me, motherfuckers. I'm coming for you. I'm done with my residency. I got Dr. Dre on the beat. It's two doctors teaming up.
to, two associates getting ready to rap together. I'm about to spit roast you with Dr. Dre. <laughs> You ever been in a devil's threesome with two doctors? <laughs> Steve in Virginia wants to know if we can make a, gra- a Craig uh, Glazer biopic. He's a phenomenon. We really should attack In that. a city with two states stands one man. <laughs> hey, it's me and Junior. Dog's there. A man, his dogs, and Bims. I run a comedy club, uh, drive a Lotus, dog's there. Brothers, love Dad. was supposed to be forever, but turns out forever is only four years. Johnny Dare, Nikki Glazer, David Tell, Larry the Cable Guy started here. You know the Bims. Glazed over the story of the of Craig Glazer. <laughs> Glazed over. Um, we we. Oh well, wait, sorry. I just totally melted out of my brain. I looked at the clock. I couldn't. I, we're, are we, <laughs> but that's are we all, over? <laughs> that's it. All zeros. So I looked up and I was like, oh, oh my Christ. Oh God. T- time has stopped. It's been completely reset. But then I couldn't look at the other clock. That's why I was like, oh, God. oh, oh no. <laughs> oh Jesus. Just let me teach you a trick, buddy. Right in the little corner of your monitor. Oh, that's fun. That is so fun. Big J. Okerson will be performing at the Eyeball Comedy Festival. Dates are coming up in Texas. Arizona and California, go get tickets and details at oddballfest.com and then download his special live at Webster Hall. You can get it on iTunes, you can stream it on Spotify, all that. So much stuff. And while you're there, just check out Dan's special, not special. Uh, also available on all the same platforms. And Dan is going to be at Big Hunt in Washington, D.C., Friday, September 23rd and Saturday, September 24th. Get your tickets at undergroundcomedydc.com. It's spelled out, undergroundcomedydc.com. I also finally put it up on my website because I'm smart. And follow us at The Bonfire, SXM, on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. Um, well, we have a guest coming in and at... The Bonfire se- at SiriusXM.com. We have a guest coming in at 7, and I know we want to do this Corey Feldman Hollywood medium, so I'm thinking we should wait till he's here, and then he can just watch it with us. It'd be nice to get some fresh eyes on the Feld dog. Oh, yeah. And then, you know, we will obviously we'll talk I to him. I feel like maybe I'd want to get his reaction more to the Amber Rose one, though. You know what we'll do? And, and this you're is probably cause... thinking that's just because he's black. Yeah. And you're right. Yeah. <laughs> well, here's what we can do is we're a democracy here. Uh, as you know, uh, cause we're it's both... a very white democracy in here. Well, you know, it is a uh, cisgendered white male based uh, democracy that I don't like, and I'm trying to break the system. Yeah, I don't know if so it's I possible let you to know, have a whiter crew than we have. I am transitioning. Culture wise, what to Native American? Oh, that's how I see myself. Is that how you do the entire interview? For many years, <laughs> I have heard stories of a man who was behind the great pillars of iron and released into the comedy world. <laughs> For he tells me stories of a Jew that this tribe knows very well, one Ari Shafir. And in the fire it burns, I see the great Jacob kipping up through the fire. Dancing with the coyote and singing to the fish. For then he will tell me if we should have the big butt, blonde haired cue ball or the man known as Dogs of Felt. Chief, what of the great moon? For the moon shall set and the sun shall rise. For our new host will know that White Man has taken the radio show. Also, we should stop the pipeline that's going through the Dakotas. That's the only political thing I'll ever say. <laughs> Uh, but for real, though, there's some fucked up shit going on in South Dakota, North Dakota. Is it bumming you out? I got high and started reading about it. What'd you read? I don't know. I don't really know. <laughs> but when you were high, you were really upset about it? <laughs> yeah. Don't you ever get high? We gotta sp- stop this sh- No, dude. I do what you're supposed to do. I get stoned and I watch, like, American Dad. Oh, man. I didn't even realize that was a thing you could do. You could do that. <laughs> You're Good all man. right now. I think your whole man was misappropriated. Yeah. Oh man. Oh man. Oh man. It was um. Yeah. I was trying to look it up. I'm dumb. So you're upset about it, and you just made an actual no, public statement, but you don't know what's going no, on? There's, um, there's, like, I, I donated to this. My friend texted me. He was like, hey, check this out. These, these fucking journalists got arrested for covering this pipeline that's going in through South Dakota, but I don't know the specifics, so I'm not going to speak about it. And I was high, and I was reading about it. It <laughs> bummed me out. And then doing the Indian voice, I just remembered that that's what happened. And then I watched Who Took Johnny. 
It was a really depressing way last night. Did you say you donated to something? I donated for the Red Warrior Foundation. It's, <laughs> it's a no DLP. I wasn't just going to get into it, but there's a there's a uh, it's the Red Warrior Camp Legal Fund. Uh, hashtag no uh, D A A L P. It's the seven. The seven try, yeah. I don't you can't know. do drugs and watch late night sad shit. That's exactly what they're preying on. My Dude, uncle, that's exactly my what uncle, who's got to do methadone till the day he dies, uh, was getting because he was a heroin addict since he was thirteen. Since he was thirteen, yeah. I said he was badass. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm sorry, you were queefing around at thirteen, just playing sports and high fiving <laughs> friends and thinking about maybe kissing a girl or grabbing boob. All right, he was yeah. booting junk. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, listening for- to fucking Sabbath, trying to learn some riffs. Um, no, my uncle Mark though, yeah, like he would get fucking whacked out on methadone or heroin or something, and he would like like donate like he's broke. Yeah. And he would just donate. Like, he worked at like a VCR repair store most of my life. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's not. He smart. was broken. He would like donate to like St. Jude. I mean, by the way, it's all good causes. I've done that. I've donated to St. Jude's. <laughs> I get St. Jude's. I get St. Jude's letters all the time. This is a common thing that happens when I get high. It's stupid for me to go read about the Dakota Access Pipeline <laughs> when I'm stoned. I just to take, just to bring that to this forum at all makes. I mean, I love that you did it. No, but I. For, it just really makes me because there's so just, just and it's like any number of things you can say. It's like if you build a Walmart and pucks a Tony. Pennsylvania, Puxatawney, Pennsylvania, you will bring that town to its knees. <laughs> yeah. Okay? The mom and pop store <laughs> is what founded Puxatawney, and you're going to come into your big corporate... It's like, just because you watch some documentary about yeah, that. Yeah, like, yeah, that that's, but by the way, that's what most Americans do now. Like, I didn't know about the fucking Dakota Access Pipeline at all. I'm still unaware of it. You've said it four times. And it's then, pretty messed up what we're doing, but you don't even know why. You don't, well, know, no, but you don't know what's messed up, but you gave money to it. Well, they're drilling through a water source that's like reserved for Native American mm. uh, tribes. And they're saying that the pipeline's going to taint their water. And so Obama blocked it, and then the, the, a lot of the companies are still drilling. That's why I didn't want to get into it, because it's fucking... It's not really... For it shall kill the momentum. <laughs> and you... Donated money to make. These guys got arrested, so I donated money for the d- defense fund. And oh, that's yeah. when I was very high. <laughs> that's so great. I'm just yeah. all things. But I've also donated to St. Jude's, co- the Jimmy V Foundation. <laughs> I cut a fucking uh, yeah. I get high and I do. I, that's where my fucking. <laughs> Look at those bald kids, man. <laughs> I'm not joking. Me out. Every time I go to my email, there's always on the sidebar some sad shit. It's goes, how they get. Hey, it. I hope your day's going good. Jessica here's coughing up blood. <laughs> Help me, man. You're 29. Is the only thing stupid. Never mind. Just give it for the next girl. You know what's funny is I, I always have my Yahoo account open, and then I'll go to Twitter, and then I'll click back on, and there's some sad St. Jude shit on the sidebar with exactly that, and then I'm like, so great. Oh man, I'm selfish. I'm the worst. Yeah, and then I read about the uh, the code of It's like Groupons. Like, you have you have like email like coupons for like restaurants and shit. And then next to it, it's like this kid would love to go to. Dude, restaurant. that's exactly what happened. I signed. I ordered a fucking uh, meal from Seamless, and then I like clicked back over, and it was like, I was yeah, like, you're like, I ordered too much. It doesn't matter. I'll just throw it out. Oh, you know, what? I'll probably kick the food into the street. <laughs> And then I, uh, and then I clicked on my email. My buddy sent me this thing like, "Oh, hey, read about this about the Dakota Access Pipeline." And then I started reading this article. I was like, "Oh, people got arrested." And then I was like, "I'll fucking donate to the defense." That's fund. bullshit, man. And then there was just, and that was last night. Fucking reporters are out there trying to do some good, <laughs> and then we stifle them. By the way, people that make fun of potheads nail it because that's exactly what I am. I'm an, I'm an ill-informed idiot. And you're so easy to get pumped up behind a car. Oh, I go zero to 60 soda. I'm the perfect so person. Great. I love that. If I wasn't compassionate, I'd be a fucking raging asshole. Hey, bro, can I borrow 20 bucks? I don't know. you got to get me high and put on some sad music. <laughs> Make it... Doom, doom, doom. Hey, for just $20, you could have Jay you cheer could, up. You could have Jay take a cab downtown. I go, you know what? Jay has taken the train a lot in his life. And I, I take cabs a lot. Boom, bing, bing, bing. I've been taking it more lately, Dan. Dan, I'm sick. I'm sick, and everyone on that place coughs. Dan, are you going to go watch Gianna Michaels get tit-fucked again? <laughs> or can you give me money to help my life? <laughs> I don't, it's raining outside. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dan, before you go buy another Ric Flair shirt, Maybe can I have fifteen dollars for my T cells? Hey, what's that behind you? Is that a, an unnecessary 
full gold expensive championship wrestling belt that you didn't win? Hello. That's cool. Oh, hello, white man. I'm walking around in the ring. My name is Sleep on Floor. You seem like you've had a pretty good life because <laughs> you're a white guy. You should donate. They're taking my water. Hey, and they're putting our journalists away. Hey, Dan. It's me again. The prognosis got worse, so if you could just get $20 to help the next kid. Remember how you so flippantly just downloaded Warriors on PlayStation 4? You just buy a lot of games. I could use some money for food. Uh, let's go donate to our cause right now. It's the bonfire. What's our cause? And now back to the bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soder. The Rebel. DJ Lou! Ha <laughs> ha! We just don't want to get in copyright infringement. We gotta say that so we don't get fucking binged again by those assholes who don't like my singing ability. It's the, the brass up in the... <laughs> We're getting run, DJ Lou. We're it is the bonfire, of course, on Comedy Central Radio, Sirius XM 95. Big Jokers and Dan Soder. We are joined right now by a, a hilarious guy who I actually met through a, a, a bonfire favorite, Ari Shafir. Ah, oh, the mensch. Who told a story on uh, his show, This Is Not Happening, that was just fucking legendary. And he is hilarious. He has a half-hour special coming out this Friday, September 16th at Midnight on Comedy Central. And he has a new album, Damaged Goods, coming out. This Friday as well. Both come out the same day. So cool. The hilarious Ali Sadiq is here with us. Yeah. What's good, man? I am so excited to be here. Um, I don't know why, but I just am, man. Yeah. I'm just... It's nice to meet you. I've never met you, but Jay has vouched for you and Ari has vouched for you, and I'm excited to see the half hour. I'm, I'm glad I've been vouched for. A lot of vouching. It's, a, it's been a lot of vouching here lately. Bert a lot of vouch for me for something. I'm like, I just, uh, I just appreciated what Dan just did right there. Just... It just struck me now what just happened. You informed him before he went on. He goes, oh, yeah, we're not just... You basically were saying, we're not just playing this because you're black, Tupac. Like, it's Tupac Wednesdays. And you, and you go, we can pick whatever music we want. Like, we wanted this. So, you know, it's Oh, like you not, thought that I was like... when I, when I, when You're making an excuse in? for playing Tupac. Or no, like. not at all. But that would be hilarious if we're coming <laughs> in and I'm like, oh, guys, can we play some Tupac for him? I want him to feel at home. <laughs> he goes, I want him to feel like he can make whatever statements he wants. And this is coming from a guy who donates <laughs> <laughs> late at night donate. when he's high. <laughs> I think I saw that Ali Sadiq guy in the thing, and you might want to play some Tupac before he walks in here. Guys, I just took a piss. Ali Sadiq's in the hallway. <laughs> Start blasting whatever aggressive Pac you have. I don't want Dear Mama. I don't want any of that fucking s soft dick shit. So you don't want none of the Pac yeah. that I actually like yeah. before you start fucking... Guys, cut the mighty, mighty boss tones. I just saw Ali Sadiq. We're going to have to do Tupac. That's why I fuck your bitch. <laughs> yeah, that one, that one. Oh. In my, t in my movie, can we have it where, uh, actually, I didn't, like, start shit with Tupac. We were talking about That's Biggie. That's good. That was good. We were that. talking about... I literally looked over at your mouth like, how the fuck are you doing that? <laughs> we were talking about, we were talking about the Notorious, the movie Notorious. Yeah. Where they just made, like, a fake story, for the most part, about, uh... How great of a guy How great of a guy, and, like, right before he died, when he was just like, Yo, Faith Evans, I want to take care of my kids. Also, I want to donate to the Dakota Pipeline to stop that. <laughs> If anything should happen on this very, very perfect night, Ugh. give half my money to St. Jude's Ugh, and Saint... all those bald babies. Uh, also, do you remember Jimmy Valentino, that coach? Jimmy uh, Valentino. <laughs> baby, baby. Bobby Valentino, daddy. Yeah. Do y'all remember him? Oh, he was mad and spiraling. I want you to donate to him. Yo, he had that speech of the Espies. That got uh. me like, yo. This for real, though, baby, baby. And, and then I want you to go down to the subway and buy all the M&Ms from one kid. Make sure those kids all get jerseys. All of them. Bad boy basketball team. <laughs> Not five, can't stop, will stop. Ugh, I'm going to go take this drive real quick, though. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to go get in the car with my mans and thems. Ugh, I'm going to go make sure I don't sit in the middle, either. I'm going to sit by the door. This happens to be a first. A slim white guy and a um, heavy as set white guy. Wow. Doing there was so much more behind that. Like, she just said it with no. Said, when you open with skinny white guy, I would want to be like, hey, oh, I would yeah. say, I, I just, hey, because I'm heavy. I'm fat. I don't give a yeah. shit. You yeah. know, it's like, my, it's like I don't look fat. Yeah, because I, I I camouflage very well, but my midsection 
is 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 wow. It's a little different I, than what you see. I've lived most of my life as skinny fat, and it's pretty nice because you go under the radar. That's so under the radar because you're all mushy in the middle, and people don't know. But you I'll tell you this: soft is you like a a pillow. Let's, in let the me tell some chicks really like Dan Soder. And then Dan will take his shirt off at a pool, and I'm just kind of like, he's got such a regular dude body. Like, regular dude like, body. Yeah. The, worst I've ever, the worst I've ever felt about I'm my... so insecure. No, it's not an insult. I would kill yeah. to have your body, I'm saying. But I get it, because the worst I've ever felt is we filmed this music video for Giannis Pappas' character, Marisa, and we took off our shirts, and Louis Katz was standing there, and Louis Katz goes, dude, I've never been as disappointed in a man. Taking off my shirt <laughs> as I am with as I am with you. He thought you were going to be shredded. He was like, I, he's like, usually when we're out doing shows, I like think you can protect me, but now I've seen your body, and I'm like, ah. yeah, I, I tend to don't do. I, we um, I play flag football for the Y, yeah. and like all of the dudes don't nobody wear a shirt. Like I don't even know why we have uniforms; they don't have them on. <laughs> yeah, and it's like they they cut the uniform like. Freaking a halter top, like, yeah. like a bunch of oh, like the fit Winnie the Poohs out there with halter tops on, and, and I will, I have the full jersey on. So you go all the way down to the end, and they, yeah. they oh, cut it how off. About, how about how much we change, but also stay the same? When I was like, when I go to like summer camp or anything when I was a kid, mm -hmm. like day camp or, or anything where they would try, they would just like stress. And by the way, counselor, now you realize as an adult, the counselors for these camps, these like shitty day camps yeah. in Philly were just like, uh, you know, they just throw it together with, with like some teenager was your counselor, and they were dicks. So they would always break up teams for sports, and then say shirts and skins, and then do it to the fat kid team would be it would be skins the skins. And I would I would fight tooth and nail. I think I may have said like I think at the last minute I changed my mind from deciding to say one of these guys molested me oh, <laughs> to saying he was like cursing at me and being shitty to get him like all, in danger of being to let him know that I was the bitchy little Jewish kid that will try to get you fired and I also like if you, you fucking do this with you know if you try to like uh, like make me take my shirt off like I hated it that much you literally grew up in Philly yeah yeah I, my, my man Papa Doc is from Philly I called him and just Pop random. a doc from Eight Mile? Yeah, no, oh, okay. Dude. That was a, that was fictitious. Oh, fictitious that wasn't character. real. Uh, <laughs> man, I thought so, that was a documentary shot in real time. I'm I'm talking, and I'm like, oh, he's like, yo, I'm I'm, saying, I'm like, I'm, I'm in Philly. Like, where you at? I'm saying, like, let me hold on, let me ask. I just stopped. I say, like, what what area is this? And he was like, I say, he said the Badlands. He was like, yo, what the fuck are you doing in the Badlands? I'm like. I don't know. I just came <laughs> randomly. Shot down to Philly. Figure check it out. <laughs> I'll probably go to the area that they. What would I call this place? I'd probably call this the terrible, <laughs> the terrible. You've street. ever been to the Badlands in Philly? I'm sure I have, but I'm not sure. Is that just like a it's nickname? Like German town. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I grew up. It's like no. It yeah. looks like the Badlands. It, it looks post-apocalyptic. Man, it's it's a. Welcome home. Yeah. I, I felt at home. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, damn. <laughs> Welcome, Welcome home. Get yourself a Coke and a Huggy. Hey. Get in the house. Welcome to the Philly. It. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the Badlands. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Were you down the Badlands? <laughs> Get out of there. You got to meet me over at the Rita's Water Ice on Broad. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that's what happened to me when I went to the Man Performing Arts Center to watch Queen. It just Man. happened to you in fucking Ireland. You, yeah. like, you went to like, the most like, I was get out the... of my fucking country. <laughs> yeah, we went to an IRA bar by accident. And we were in the place called the Liberties, but that you're, you're in saying, the wrong place. Leave the women and get you know off what? of here. The same people that were moving guns on um, Sons and August. Yes, hell yes. Okay, so you, you reacting to your friend Papa Doc? That's what happened to me later in the day, where they're like, "What part of Dublin were you in?" I was like, uh, "Just like west of St. Patrick's Cathedral." Like you're in the Liber oh. you're in the Liberties, <laughs> and I'm like, "Out oh, of that doesn't sound fun." And then they were like, "Yeah." When we told them where we were at, they're like, "That's an IRA bar," and you're like, "Fuck." Well. The slums and music, we're always in musicals, right? You think you're going to go through those neighborhoods and a bunch of like ratty kids are going to be like, we got to fix our town yeah. this time. That's funny as shit. <laughs> I know, like, <laughs> oh, there's, oh, look at that's that. that. Funny. I got a way bo better body now than I did then. Well, yeah, oh, there you're on the right. Yeah, that's skinny fat, buddy. No, but it's not. Look it's at funny. Nate. Listen, Yeesh. Your butt, Nate's always had a hilarious body, but you're, uh, <laughs> but here's the thing. Your body's like, it's fine. Thanks. But it's so 
Thanks. It's so extremely fine. It's just okay. It's gotta, just fine. You know what I do? I have a but real. But you said you do, and you and you're. I right, listen. I'm with you a lot. Especially oh, in the red you're shorts. Ver, you're, yeah. very, you're very. You're well, very comfortable. Yeah, that's that. <laughs> wow. You're ver- that, that's right where I'm at. See, okay. the problem is the problem. Let me tell you what the what what would change this whole thing. Yeah. Just like with me. This is this is just imagine that body. Okay. Darker. Okay. Okay. Just if this was a created character, <laughs> I just so, have to change the skin color. What we have to do is just push ups. Dan working on the stomach. Just get the chest out a little more, and it makes the stomach look yeah. smaller. And Bang. so I feel I look better now because I have started doing push-ups, and the belly's gone down. And so I feel a little bit better now. But that's where I kind of, that's my resting body. That was my, the only thing as a, when I was pretty much committed in my life, that I was like, I'm probably going to be like a bigger guy. Yeah. My life. I'm still trying to lose weight and, and get in shape. But since teenager, always like lifted weights and just stuff like that, just to like at least have that base of like, not you got just str- having like tits to kind of come around over you here, good, you know what I mean? Yeah, you got good strong weight, torso. Weight doesn't have anything to do with being healthy. It's like you never see, you never heard a, a um, sumo wrestler with a heart disease. Well, it depends. It depends on the kind. Sumo wrestlers tend to do it in like a weird like. There's something like gaining weight like in your whole body to become like a giant thing. It's always terrible for, like health for your heart in that regard though, because just like the stress on your muscles, but. Like the worst kind is like that very American fat, that fucking all gut. Yeah, because like they're no not minerals. big anywhere else. But but that's just like something about that type someone, of. It's I've something heard, about like intercellular versus like like out of your cell. You know what I mean? Like I've uh, heard that's uh, called the party ball. When someone has that on their stomach, <laughs> they call it a party oh, dude, ball. I'll tell you what, you got to come over and do it. You want to do something and smoke and do something? Yeah. Oh, please. Don't besides donate to great costs. Yes. <laughs> please. Dude, please just marathon with me. Like uh, a, a couple episodes of Comics Unleashed. It's my favorite thing yes, in the world. Of the course. segues, the fact that road comics go on there, and I, the ball sack to go. You see, you, you watched Comics watch, Unleashed? Um, I don't want to say anything bad, the fifth? bad, but no, I haven't done okay. it. I turned um, the show down seventeen times. It's it's the it's one of the reasons my girlfriend loves me. It's and for I, the fact that I turned it down. I haven't done it. Um, because you know they this very you have to have a white. A black and, mm-hmm. and, and you have to have those set with, without without even viewing my stuff. They told me, "Nah, we, we're past." I'm like, and so when when people do stuff like that, I just internally say, you know, I don't really ever want to do you. Yeah, you know, do yourself. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll watch the show and check out the bullet you've dodged. Yeah, it's, it's the funniest God, show. I before. sat there while Bill Bellamy yeah. um did the show, and I'm just sitting there watching and. I'm just like okay. I, I'm not really missing anything. I could, I could oh, do without it. Oh boy, you are not. But I mean, it's amazing how people go up there. Like every other episode that I watch, somebody does the. Hey, I don't know what's going on. Like white kids got time out growing up, but we all, you know, yeah, like Mexican same. kids or black, whatever it is, they just go. Well, we got time out. Time out from uh, getting our asses. Well, you know, get out. Uh, Byron Allen. Now, yeah. Byron Allen reacts the same way. But why? He just heard it three episodes ago. The same. Yeah. It's just crazy. He reacts to it the same they, way. It's they, like a Ric Flair reaction, the way Ric Flair used to run around the ring, then fall over. But you You're know, like, but it's funny. But he does that. He goes, uh, "I love Ric Flair." He goes, uh, <laughs> "But <laughs> can we please isolate that audio for me?" I love Ric Flair. Just the way that Ollie said that was fucking priceless. <laughs> I love Ric Flair. That that was it was really, yeah that was real in my mind. All I see was the Nature Boy. Just when you said it. Who? Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> the nature boy, yeah, the one, the one I'm always after, yeah. They always, I think that's what it is. Flair Savage, one two. That's my one two. Yeah. By the way, Ric Flair followed me on Twitter. Did he? Wow, that's a real thing. The nature boy. That's a fucking real thing. I woke up and my phone said followed back by Nature Boy. That's that's your prize for donating to Indian legal for, funds. For I shall bless you with the great, <laughs> for the white haired old tan boobed warrior, <laughs> the oldest warrior, the man who takes a slap, walks and falls, for it's he a, will follow you on the bird. I feel for a guy like Ric Flair in in some ways though because he was a muscly guy. Yeah. But even at his best, youngest muscly, he always had Ric Flair dad body. <laughs> Some of those guys just can't get Jack the action figure way you oh, want to. They just can't. You know what it is? is it's, corner, it's, it's corner tip. It's long pecs. <laughs> yeah. If you got long pecs, man, it ain't happening. You need those pecs you need where your nips point down when you yeah. flex. Like they go, you need Batista. You need Batista pecs. 
and he's got Ric Flair side angle. He's got flapjack tits. Oh, that's the worst. Dude, the best was when we were swimming at that barbecue, and that guy oh, took his shirt God. off, and you go, did someone switch Aaron's head with Ric Flair's body? <laughs> yeah. And I knew exactly what you were talking about. You were talking about his pecs. <laughs> yeah, he had Ric Flair pecs. Do we have any pictures of Ric Flair? Oh, my God. Let's go young Ric Flair. And that's who I want. If I, Whenever, as soon as I get a special, uh, uh, an hour special, a half hour special is going to be is great. A uh, full hour, I want which is, Rick ha- which is coming out this Friday, September Check it out. 16th. Midnight on Comedy Central, and you can also buy his album Damaged Goods, Ali Sadiq. I Same want day. Rick Flair to, to 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 bring me out. Oh, hell oh. that's who better to woo! bring me out than Rick Flair? And I mean, hit you with the woo at the end. It's over. And, it's pretty- just, and the way he talks, and he's like, not everything with his jaw broken. I fucking <laughs> love him. That man, yeah. Look, get him shirtless. I love Rick Flair. <laughs> but yeah, look at him young. He, that's him now. That's oh, not dude, fair. That so now. great. None of this is fair. Oh, but still, you get it. Stop skimming through them. Oh, and just perfect. <laughs> oh, that was when Shawn Michaels apologized to him before he started. Look where his tits start. <laughs> Go to a young picture of him. Young Ric Flair. Oh, Dusty Rhodes. I love yeah, that Dusty Rhodes yeah, went Dusty with Rhodes, it. Man. I love that he went without a shirt just unapologetically. Yeah, look. I, I mean, he he's so, he's so I young think. there, but look at his body just sucks. <laughs> Dude, it's true. He's, he could have been 37 and you don't know. He, yeah. He he's made, tw- I want to say he's 21 in that picture. Are you serious? Yeah. I mean, his body is hard. Look at him. <laughs> that's that's prime Ric Flair. That's the best it ever got for him. I swear to God, if you guys get yeah, me unfollowed. That's, that's prime Ric Flair because his head was golden. Oh, golden. Man. If you guys get me unfollowed, I will fuck both of you up. <laughs> Ric Flair. Look, I was going to open back up. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, that's per- is that he looks like the Ric Flair's got the body of like like, he like, 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 German, to, like he's a German dude like those like those realistic results of like a, a back of a comic book like tired of getting sand kicked in your face yeah. do you want to be built like a 1950 Superman yeah do you want to be a real Superman lift bags do you want the body that only looks good in a one strap fucking <laughs> one piece woman's bathing suit you know what his body always looks like he gave up working out a month ago or he only worked out with dumbbells that had like like two circles in the end that said like yeah, like said a number on them like 100 yeah he's That's like, the first shake weight body yeah yeah, yeah yeah he looks like he looks like he puts one of those jiggling belts around his torso <laughs> <laughs> where it's like <laughs> you gotta attack the core <laughs> <laughs> remember those old P shorts the, the, yeah. it's a two button at the yeah. top he just wore them all the time <laughs> oh hey what's up Arn you quite Walked in on me. I'm just training for wrestling. <laughs> Body is terrible. Oh, the shorts you're talking about the like the uh, assistant coach shorts. Yeah, yeah. yeah dude, oh my, dude, coordinator shorts. Dude, just getting yelled at by a football. I said I did football only for. I did Hell Week, which was the dumbest thing to yeah, stay for that days. and then quit. I did the two a day week, and I just got tired of this dude fucking. It was my first time ever playing organized football in senior year of high school. I never played organ. I played street football my whole mm-hmm. life, but I never played organized. And I, they wanted to be an offensive lineman. I wasn't f- getting the plays, and I'm not fast or anything. I was strong, was it. But being yelled at and like humili- trying to get humiliated by a guy wearing shorts like that. Yeah. And if you said something, I'm pretty sure would have fought me. Yeah. <laughs> or you've gone like this. No, they don't. They go to the brink of fighting you, and then uh, football coaches just turn it into severe discipline. Dude, when I quit, the, the, when I quit, the, one of the assistant coaches would call me a faggot in school. It was like really what? Yeah, dude, it was like crazy aggressive. Those guys. Oh wait, yeah. I yeah, really yeah. have a thing. Like, I, I, I mean, coaches. Like, I think they're horrible people. But you know what's funny is they really do have that thing where they you feel like they're gonna fight you, and then you push them to that, and then they just turn oddly sentimental. We're like, yeah, I oh, love you, you know boys. what? I love you, boys. Then, fuck you, Coach Nolan. Then fuck you. And he's like, you know what? Thought you were better than that, Soder. Thought you were bigger than that. Turns out, you weren't. I was looking forward to coming to your graduation from UMass. Your mom told me a story about your dad. <laughs> Thought I could be there for you. <laughs> Turns out I can't because you keep pushing everyone away. And that's why you blew that soft cover too. You know you got hooked, Curl. <laughs> Emotional football coach. And they very damaged, man. They drinkers. Yeah, they do. All of them drinkers, but they good. One of the hard- good. Did you play? Huh? Yeah. You played high school ball mm-hmm. in Texas. Yeah. That's which is insane. no bullshit. Which is, which I was safety and a cornerback. We played Grapevine in seven on seven. Grapevine oh. High School. Yeah, that's in Dallas. Yeah, and they were like serious business. Yeah. They were serious business. It was like Foo Fighters in the side. Damn. There goes my. I even 
ten. I needed a ten. There was a uh, Walmart shut down because the high school team's playing. <laughs> the Coyotes, the old Grapevine Coyotes, are playing Sorry. up in Colorado. No. Shut down for reason. Coyotes are playing. It's coy- <laughs> Welcome to coy- Coyotes. Of- coyote country. <laughs> there was a. Uh, we went. To, dude, you were talking about football coaches getting drunk. We went to this tournament, and one of our younger coaches, who was at the time 22, 23 years old, hammered. But they got drunk the night before, and he was still blitzed in the morning. And we had our team meeting, and he had a dip in, and he was just, he was just like slurring his speech. And he's like, "You guys, you guys better love this shit. <laughs> <laughs> this shit better, shit better get your dick hard." And he started spitting, and, like, ah, and we're all like sitting there, like, "What the fuck did Coach Smock just say?" Y'all have some, y'all have some very damaging coaches. Yeah. Oh, man. They, they change y'all. They, the coach is supposed to mold you. When oh, I played, I uh, when I played little league baseball, there was a coach who was like the father of a neighborhood kid. And when they lost a game, I think in the playoffs, this dude started freaking out. I was just like, you know, I was like the fact that they put me in right field, but I hit cleanup because so I could hit a ball. Yeah. But they just like stuffed me out where I didn't have to do anything. Respect the power. So like, there's half the game that I am literally just like, you know, like looking at butterflies and shit, <laughs> not, not giving a shit. And like, you know, I'm like, if we go, don't go to the playoffs. I wasn't that invested in baseball. I just didn't like the sport that much. Yeah. Um, football, basketball, I loved. But like, uh, the fucking, which, a guy, a coach from one of the teams, like, they lost the game. He started screaming at the kids and then both choked on his own spit and then had a fucking heart attack on the field. Wait, he major league tooted it? Uh, yeah, dude, it was feels absolute... like a thing. It feels like a heart attack thing. <laughs> I love this British shit. I might move to England. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what happened. Dude, he fucking, uh, yeah, and he had a heart Damn attack right the there in the field. Ricky. And you're just like, you are giving a shit. I mean, we were nine. Yeah, that's too much. You, I mean, playing high school football in Texas, people give a big shit about that. Yeah, you got, it is football. Oh, What's but, the but craziest every, but every thing? Sport, but every yeah, sport but everyone. Like at, but in those high schools, like everyone's kind of not everyone, but there's several guys on every team that's like, I have a chance to play pro. Everybody in Texas think they can go pro. Do they? That's the problem. <laughs> that's Everybody the... think they kid can go pro, and and the parents yeah. feel like, hey, my kid's going pro. It's a lot of fights at uh, like little league games. Like, that's what I'm talking the, about. The, the, the look like Pop Warner. Yeah. Oh man, that's that's huge. That's crazy. You know, football is huge when Pop Warner. Like people literally take off work and pop, everybody's there and yeah. they fight literally yes. over small calls. I'm like, yeah, y'all crazy. I took my son out. I'm like, nah, really? We, we ain't doing this. Yeah. I and then I gave him to a ex football coach who's a swim coach now that still drinks. My son is. Best swimmer ever, but his coach is always <laughs> his coach is named Grasshopper. And he's, he just gets always, hammered. Man. He, he is, how do you give? Do you understand? How you go do you to coach the pool? swimming drunk? No, man, he don't get in the water. He here's, does not get in the water with my here's, son. Here's the deal, kids. Uh, I would dip a toe in, but if I do, I might fall asleep. And have to, someone's gonna have to fish me out. You guys don't have the body strength. Oh man, <laughs> oh, man. you were really. You were fucking knifing through that water. What's what's your name? Your new name is Dolphin. You're like a dolphin. I'm gonna take a nap on You're, these uh, bleachers. You were like the. It's, the it's he's like dolphin. Mm, mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. this guy gets it. Like a, this guy gets it. I'm gonna take a quick nap. You guys wake me up. Then he wakes up. He goes. Why is it so humid? <laughs> What's up? Why am I next to the pool? How, how hammered is I sleeping here again? <laughs> Did he he just gets hammered and coaches. Do you kid? understand to walk up to the pool? Like I leave, yeah. and then I come back and I see the coach outside smoking a cigarette. I'm like, yo, where's my kid? Hey, he's backstroking. He's like, cause in his mind, he taught him how to swim already. He's not gonna drown. If my kid drowns at five years old in that pool. Um, it's gonna be a problem. I'm gonna be yeah. mad at the kid. I'm like, yo, you are. I know you can swim. Yeah. You've already been to competitions at this point. So yeah. if you drown in practice. That's your fault. I that just love the coach. The like, coach. we gotta do it in my house because I drove my car into the pool. <laughs> <laughs> I love, the I, of, I love the thought of him and be like, all right, it's warm up, laps time. And they start swimming, and he goes, I'm going to step outside and have a butt. He goes, now you guys are going to do multiple, le- multiple, mul- that's a weird word, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Sidetracked. That's a funny word, right? Y'all just going to swim back and hey, forth nine times. <laughs> did you guys see a snack machine? <laughs> Hey, kids, kids, do you know there's a deli where I can get smokes around here? <laughs> hey, listen, Johnny, you do laps. Billy, 
go take this run the store and grab me you got smoke. You got bike. Tell us for coach. You got a bike, right? Get camel wides. <laughs> I you like camel wides. <laughs> camel wides. I like camel wides. Don't fuck up. Um, <laughs> I think we got to take a break. I like you hang out with the rest of the show. We're man, only going like to hang out with y'all forever, man. Y'all very, crazy. very cool. Uh, Ali Sadiq, his uh, new half hour special on Comedy Central premieres at midnight this Friday. Uh, check that out, and also his new album comes out on the same day. Which is awesome. Damaged Goods, you can download it on Damaged Friday. Goods, check that out. And no bullshit, uh, Jacob, our producer here, was really raving about yeah. Damaged Goods. Like, kept no shit kept saying how great it was. He said yeah. the album's awesome. And, uh, Jacob doesn't lie. He's we're still having, yeah, he he does not. <laughs> I can't we're, wait to hear his opinion. We're hanging that. out with Ali Sadiq, everyone. It's the bonfire. Now that it's almost fall, life is more hectic than ever. That's why I care about getting my best quality sleep. Mm -hmm. And it's why I love my sleep number bed. To be your best during the day, you can't afford a mediocre night's sleep. That's right, Dan. You can't. I uh, need you at 100%. Can I just tell you something? What? I upped my sleep number. Did you? 60. To 60 now. Yeah. You go in small increments. Yeah, I'm going to be up there. Do you notice a difference? I feel like if you don't move 10 points, I'm not feeling the difference too much. Not yeah. enough to change to get my... Uh, 58% more likely improved sleep quality. <laughs> I feel like I'm a better person at night. Yeah? Like I donate a lot. You just got to find the right setting so you don't turn into a werewolf. <laughs> uh, you can definitely afford a sleep number bed. My sleep number setting, still going at 75. Uh, Dan's now changed to 60. He's creeping up there. The sleep number bed lets me choose my ideal firmness and change it. That's the good thing. And each side adjusts, making it the perfect bed for couples. With the optional Sleep IQ technology, it tracks your sleep number setting, um, and it lets you know what to adjust for to get your best quality sleep. In fact, according to Sleep IQ research, people who adjust their sleep number setting are 58% more likely to have improved sleep quality. My sleep number setting, 75. Dan, 60. A queen sleep number mattress with uh, Sleep IQ technology starts at only $1,099.98. It's a great value. No better sleep. Sleep member beds and Sleep IQ technology are only available at any one of the 500 sleep number stores nationwide. Find one near you by going to sleepnumber.com. And be sure and tell them Jay and Dan sent you. Please do. And now back to the bonfire with Big Jay Okerson and Dan Soder. Oh, mm. it's Tupac Wednesday right here on the bonfire. Comedy Central Radio, Sirius XM 95. Big Jay Okerson, Dan Soder, being joined by the hilarious Ali Sadiq, whose half-hour special and new album both come out this Friday, September 16th. Make sure you check those out. Um, this is a fun talk. We've been doing the commercial. We were... Yeah, we were talking about uh, more swim team stuff. <laughs> and then, fuck, what were you talking about? And we forgot it. None it of us can remember. It was going to be so good. It. it was going to be so good. And we were sitting there, and you're like, oh, wait, I'll talk about that on air. I know, and then I forgot. I started donating the causes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just let you know where our mindset is. Just started... Oh, man, I'm just donating the causes. I'm just here. being a better person, man. <laughs> uh, how, yeah. many call, how, many, how many times have you donated? Five. Five. Mm -hmm. Five. Holy shit, really? Yeah. <sighs> donated high. Donated five. high five times. Five. Oh. Now, I probably would have donated a lot if I, I... I did mushrooms um for the first time ever. When? Um, I did this, the third season of This Is Not Happening. Yeah. I, was, I swear to you I was going to say it's something to do with Ari. I swear to you I was going to say <laughs> it definitely has something to do with Ari. Oh, yeah. mushrooms? Shafir's connected to yeah. this. <laughs> so, so he, you know, he gave me some and... <laughs> and I was like, eh, mushrooms. I'm a, I'm a vegetarian. I can eat mushrooms. And no, different type of mushrooms. Yeah. It came back like, it's like four, it took like 45 minutes. In yeah, it's usually. How did you do with uh, just like eating them? Just the actual act of eating them. To me, it's such a jarring And let me explain experience. As, as someone that's done mushrooms with Jay, he's very bad at eating stuff he does not like. So eating mushrooms, it's adorable in kind of a sense. Because I'll just gut them down. That's how I did I, it. Yeah, because I'm high plains trash. So I'll just eat it and be like, give me or, you know, like, it's all, it's in the stomach. Let the work do what the work do. <laughs> Not me. I'm like, where's my Nana to give me some juice to make this taste go away? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jay was like, my num nums. I don't like my num nums. <laughs> yeah. and, he, and he had to like gut it down. So you, you just ate them. I just, I was leaving the set. And I was with this oh, other, I was with this other comic, Billy Billy Sorrell, and he was like, "Man, just eat them, man." So I just ate them, and we in Hollywood. He said, "Man, we're gonna go to this little spot," and I didn't, for some reason, I didn't want to get out. 
I was like, I'm gonna just chill right here. And like maybe 15 minutes later, I called Billy. I'm like, hey, um, look, I don't know what's going on, but just want to let you know, um, LA just took a picture of me, and I want to go to my room because it just flashed. And I was like, nah, that's not normal, dude. <laughs> I know my eyes just don't flicker like yeah. that. So I'm sitting there, and I'm really. Yeah. Tripping. I was on the I was on the elevator at the Lowe's for fifteen minutes, <laughs> and that was just for before I knew that I was actually that I had never pushed a button. See, what you had done is you, you took the mushrooms, and then just kind of jumped out of the plane without the parachute because you got to know where you're going. I was trying to get back to my room. Yeah, and all I needed to do was get back to my room, but. I was on the, the um, elevator, 15 minutes on there. Mm -hmm. Lady gets on like, yo, I'm like, man, what are you doing? She's like, you haven't pushed a button. So we go up, and then I still won't get off the elevator because in the lows, it's like the carpet is like a lot of colors. And it's okay. wavy. And I didn't, I, didn't need, I didn't need all them colors right there because it looked wet. It like the whole, like a, a colorful ocean. And I, and I had the doors open. I just kept sticking my foot out like, nah, I'm going to fuck my shoes up. That's wet. So, boom, get to my room finally after I crawled. I didn't want, I never wanted, when I tell the story, I never tell people I crawled. You the, crawled? To the whole end of the. Well, did you swim? Were you doing like a swim stroke? <laughs> in the, in the, in I was like, <laughs> the... it, it was a terrible uh, crawl. He's I, plugging his nose at half height. <laughs> it's like, it was terrible. I like if you put your headphones on, you can hear that they're playing psychedelic music for your story. It's oh. great. And, no, and this is a different headphone. Yeah. Oh, so, what happened? I finally get to my room, yeah. and I, I, I'm Hello, doing... Oh, well, it's a step in there. <laughs> I'm your imagination. It's me, your couch. <laughs> you really haven't been paying much attention to me. Why don't you come over here and let me hug you with comfort? <laughs> hey, so it's me, the drawers. <laughs> Why am I necessary in a hotel room? How you? long you staying at a Crown Plaza? <laughs> uh, this is basically it. So I'm in the room and I'm literally, I'm freaking out. So I say, I'm trying to calm myself down and I make the mistake of going into the bathroom. Oh, you looked in the mirror. Looked in the mirror, but I'm trying to wash my face. No. And this is when it goes really, really bad because I had not washed the makeup off from what they did <laughs> at the set. So you think you're melting. <laughs> so I wash my face, and I just see all this brown on this white towel, <laughs> and I call Billy Sorrell. I say, hey, Billy. I'm about to be a white man. It's crazy. And That's it, hilarious. <laughs> you just start applying for small bank loans, small business loans online. You're like, and it I found finally out, worked out. This is how you find out things about your your um your mom, man. I called my mom and I was like, "Yo, don't judge me. I'm in L.A. I'm in a hotel room. I'm high, and a lot of celebrities. This is why I tell my mom. I say a lot of celebrities have died in hotel rooms." Without people knowing they were in it. Oh, okay. Not that I'm even a celebrity. No, but I get what you mean. I'm I, thinking like I'm the first people come to my mind. Whitney, Pimp C. I'm like, yo, people yeah. passed away in hotels. I don't want to be in there by myself without people knowing. The mom said, but I get that because that does because you're like, if I tell my mom, then I won't die because I've told her. Therefore, it breaks that whole thing. Th that's Man. a very high thought. <laughs> very high thought. But I get it. So I'm like, she said, you, I, I'm, I'm trying to come down. And my mom simply says, and this is at like 3.30 in the morning. She says, you need to drink some milk. And I said, you don't know. And I hung up. And then I called a real mushroom user yeah. and simply said, Man, you need to drink some milk. The dairy stops the psilocybin in your stomach. I call Is that what happens? Yeah, yeah, it coats your stomach. I call my mom back, and it's all I said to my mom. I said, hey, junkie. And That's I hung funny. up on That's her. Funny. And she goes, I'm not a junkie, Ali. What I do is I squeegee my third eye. I see what we're all seeing is that we're trees. Once a year, I trip on psilocybin. You but see, I like mushrooms, Ali, it's what you see between the, the raindrops. I mean, what you just did is you just saw the earth for what it actually is, which is just a glimpse of dust in delight. Anyways, I love you. Call me later. <laughs> oh, so mom tips on mushrooms? Hi, it's your mom again. I know you're on mushrooms, but I just want to let you What's know. What's going on? You out there in the fields chasing the brown wolf? Yeah. <laughs> Hey, you should understand that we are all trees, and our circulatory systems branch out like branches. It's kind of odd, isn't it? Listen to Rolling Stone's Sticky Fingers. Hey, I love you. <laughs>
We're all just little dust flickers on this big marble floating through space, man. Enjoy it while you got it. Drink some milk. Mm. <gasps> Welcome to another. Yeah, it should always be drink some yeah. milk. <laughs> drink, drink some, some milk. milk. Mom loves you. If you want if you want the balloon to go down, drink some milk. Mama loves you. <laughs> <laughs> Mushroom tips with mom. Dude, that's a great idea. Oh my god, I can't take the dream it. police are only chasing Hold you on. back into your own mind. Yeah, yeah. drink some milk, baby. Don't you understand that your existence, while very small and minute, has probably got a large impact to people around you. You should love yourself. And love your work. Drink some milk. Mama loves drink you. Milk. Mama loves you. Yeah. Oh my God, this is me. I was so loose in yeah. my mind. Oh yeah, you go. I was. A, I was all over. I was a mess. I was all over the place. I so, think your mistake would be with that. At least again, I'm. I have limited mushroom uh, knowledge. I mean, I've done it a, uh, a handful of times, maybe. And I, and I will say that it's a. Uh, even at the time where you feel like the mistake you're making, I think is like going to be alone. You should have hung out with your buddy and Gotta went to be that comedy club. You should have went to the comedy club, talked to people because it, it roots you back down into what, like you know, it also, what's happening. When you're by yourself, that's when you start. To me, what I don't go in the direction you and I go much more into like the. This is night I just die in a hotel room. I have a heart attack and no one's gonna know. Is anyone even gonna care? This is my body for three days probably. I go into uh, I go into a mode where I'm by myself and I'm like, man, I don't want to talk to anybody. Everyone hates me. I get why everyone hates me. I'm always so needy and I'm just fucking stupid. And this world, just, what is this world? I mean, is there to be here and this world. I'm like, help, help. Vecchione walks in. I'm like, hi. Do you want to talk about Pearl Jam versus Soundgarden? You know when someone stops smoking weed and doing like mushrooms and stuff, all that really comes down to whenever I hear someone explain why they don't do it if they used to do it yeah it's an excuse I used to for a long time go uh, it's like ah you fucking pussy but now <laughs> I really have like a yeah I totally get it it will eventually outweigh when, it, when they go yeah no it just started to make me like paranoid yeah. freak out the time and I go for so many years, I'm like, what are you even talking about? Paranoid. Yeah. I always thought it meant like paranoid, like the cops are going to find out you have it on you or something. No, no, no. I'm like, what do you mean paranoid? Mm. And then exactly, I know what paranoid is. Like sometimes if I'm alone, especially, and I smoke too much, I get like the, like I'm having a heart attack or something. So it's like my hand's numb. My hand's numb. Dude, I took... Oh, and I'm like, why do I pay money every month to have the, to, to roll those dice? Yeah. I told you, I told you when I took that THC pill in the club quarters by the punchline in San Francisco, I took a THC pill. My, my girlfriend at the time was flying back to New York and it kicked in and I was alone and I got way too high and I was like, what if me thinking about the plane crashing makes the plane crash and what if I just, I thought it so then it happened and then I fucking spiraled. It was fucking terrible alone in that tiny ass hotel room. I ate a Death Star from Joey Diaz and got on the plane. And I and I I was losing it. I yeah. was literally losing it. I, I, yeah, I don't want people say take an edible for the plane. Ride. I I'm like, I don't fucking want to do that. I like, do. I don't. Always, don't. I'd rather do take. A, I'd rather take like a Xanax and just I like hit take the a sack. Shotgun to the head and take another Death Star. I and do be on a plane. I do it all the time. I take. I usually eat. I'll eat forty milligrams and then I'll just. I watched Ten Cloverfield Lane and that flight I ate sixty because it was L.A. to New York. That's the. Dude, scary if you thing. take if you take fucking uh, sixty grams of sixty uh, milligrams. Of, of uh of yeah of weed yeah before you get on a fucking plane you'll watch airplane crash videos <laughs> on that thing and not give a shit like it's so interesting how these planes can just fucking misfire sometimes <laughs> i mean what I, I mean guys think about it the electricity in this thing could just go out it's happened in cars it could happen here what what happened was is i ate Two, I had the Tootsie Roll Pops from the guy uh, the guy that comes to a couple comedy shows and sells edibles to us, and I ate two of them, and I was like, ah, oh, these are pretty strong, so I should let it happen. And halfway through the flight, I'm watching 10 Cloverfield Lane, I'm like, I'll have another one. And I ate it, and then a guy got up to go to the bathroom, and my it was just like everything collapsed. So I was like, <gasps> I just couldn't breathe, and I was in the middle seat, and I was like, <laughs> like four hours, just like, you know, uh, you know our friend Ralph Sutton. Yeah, I actually told him to eat like uh, he's supposed to just eat like an arm or a head off one of those gummy yeah. people, like the yeah. gum, little gummy people. Yeah. And I was like, Ralph, you're six foot five. You're a big guy. I mean, you can take I eat half of it. And he's not a weed guy at all. As we found out, he had a seizure when he smoked two hits the other week. Wow. Um, but he takes this thing and like, I remember him just. <laughs> he went to the stand with me after the podcast, and then he just comes up to me and he goes. And he's like a 46 year old guy. He goes, yeah, I gotta go. And he starts like, he starts like well, I, I go, let me just pay for my drink, Ralph. And I'll walk you out. I go, and he goes, okay. But he doesn't stop. He just keeps going. He walks out the stand, front door, and just across third, like, like Frogger. Yeah. But Mr. Magoo just walked, he just kept going for it. I go, Ralph, 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 Ralph. Ralph. Yeah. 
<laughs> and I put him, I put yeah, I put him in a, I put him in a cab, and he went home. And then I talked to him the next day. He goes, "Oh man, I came back to my house, and I uh, I thought my life was uh, a reality show. It was being broadcast live on TV." <laughs> And then I had a young Eastern European girl come over and massage me back so I, I understood that I was not on TV anymore. I'm like, what? I used to... Uh, that is hysterical. When I ate too many edibles, I used to... When it really fucked me up, I would just start sweating. So I would, like, be okay. And then I'd start freaking out, and everyone would be like, so are you all right? I'm like, yeah. And then I'd just, <laughs> just start sweating <laughs> uncontrollably. What we'll, go, what we'll go through to, to possibly get that like little bit of stone that you had that one time when you were 16. <laughs> yeah. when, I w when I started smoking with any kind of regularity, I was maybe 26 or something. Yeah. With any kind of regularity. And I mean, what's funny about that, do you remember this? If I say this, you might remember it. It might be something, because it only lasted for like six months, but it's six months of this. When I first started smoking, like daily at night, we'll say, I coughed so much every time that I threw up every time I smoked weed. It was a thing like, so I'd be on my on our balcony in Queens, and like I'd have like Lewis or Dave or one of our friends over, and they just got used to the fact that, you know, yeah. when I hit the bowl, I'd be like, I'm like, yeah, that was crazy tonight. The comedy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like just off the balcony. <laughs> and really? Then, yeah. And then I was like, but it just became like normal. I was like, part of like, yeah, I'll learn how to not do that you at some point. How, they they got accustomed to that, right? You you do, you did it all. Yeah. The time. But you, I, but the thing is, like, the fact that I still continue to smoke it, you're like, man, yeah. I must really like watching movie stoned or something. That's because, like, like a, that's, a, that's a very hard effort. It's to a go. violent transformation. <laughs> We're like, hold on, guys, let me go feel a little better for this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he goes, yeah, I do, I do want to watch Eddie Murphy Delirious. Let's just go get a little stone first. Then it's just the Michael Jackson's thriller. I'm like, yeah. oh, run away. Run away. Go away. It's freaking hysterical. Yeah, I, I, one of my friends, it was, I remember we used to just, the thought in high school was the more you coughed, the higher you got. Yeah. Got to cough to get that. off, bro. Yeah. I and remember I, that. And I remember one time my, my friend coughed so much that all of a sudden he was just like, Ugh. <laughs> and just passed out, and everyone was like, "What? Fujak just passed out. Why do they always have great names too? Yeah, Fujak. Yeah. But yeah. well, like you do, you just cough and do it. Just like, fell out. They called it a foo spa. We called it a foo spaz for a while because a foo spaz. You can until you throw up is hilarious. This is, this is why I'm way more comfortable being high with white people. I just I learned that in the last year. Oh I, really? Oh, when I'm at my highest and comfortable is around white. I would have never took the mushrooms if somebody black would have gave me some mushrooms or any other race. It was just it was Ari, and it's like. Cause I I like people who do the thing. I know I'm a survive because he he does them. Yeah, you're with the guy you know, that does. Like Ari, Joey, very, Ari's very comforting to do drugs with. Joey, I, do you understand? I don't trust people. <laughs> so and this man just handed me a bag of rotten yeah. something shit mushrooms, and I just ate them. I mean, like, yeah, they're grotesque dried mushrooms, and you eat it's fucking crazy that you do that at I'm all. I'm doing a podcast with Joey, and he comes out with this huge brick of. Oh, this, this is 5,000 milligrams, and, and I got the last opiate of all times. And I'm just sitting there like, I, I want to leave because I do this with him. Yeah. I, I would actually do, like, I just pulled on your pen. I don't even know. Y'all know your mouth. Been a, I'm yeah. very comfortable high with white people. You know what's funny Not about that? Not black people. Why? Because I've noticed all, like, when I've smoked weed with just black people, you black people can smoke so many consecutive blunts. Yes. That it knocks me out, and they're like, oh, and I'm like, how are you not falling asleep? Because nothing happens. This is why I don't like it, because nothing happens after. We just high. That's it. Yeah. See, with, with y'all two, I know it's going to be some adventure that's going to go on but video. When, but whenever I smoked exclusively with black people, it was always like in ways you were like, this is more dangerous than we should be making it. It's always like, it's like, hey, you want to drive around and smoke a blunt? I'm like, why don't we not? Let's go somewhere you else. Be let's, comfortable. Not, let's not drive also. And like, we're breaking so many laws now that we're like, <laughs> we're kind of asking for trouble here. I don't want to. I don't want to out this comic because uh, I don't know if he's cool with me telling the story. But we were Gear Barnes. Go ahead. No, but we were Gear Barnes. We were, <laughs> make up a name. We were in. Uh, we were in Ireland. And Shucky Ducky. Shucky Ducky hamburger brought weed. He brought weed with him to Ireland, and he was rolling blunts. And I'm like, "Oh, you want to go smoke?" And I was like, "I don't. I didn't really see any areas we could smoke. Maybe there's like a parking garage." He's like, "No, let's walk around." And he's just walking around Dublin, smoking a blunt. You know why? Because we have the. This is out. This is I do that a lot. This is my 
take on this. Yeah. They don't know what I'm smoking. Okay. And by the time the smell hits them, they're already down the I'm, street? I'm walking. But here's the thing. I, I got the say, old, old golly OG. I gotta say, in the, in the grouping of like friends I have, I have never felt, for whatever reason, the white privilege of cops not fucking with you like really hard. I've had that a lot. And so I'm, I've am i had arguments with Ari Shafir a lot. He smokes joints in the street. He smokes joints and just walk the down the street and, go, and do his thing. And I'm like... He's like, oh, what's the, if they see the cops, you just put it out. What are they going to do? What are they going to do? He was always like, what are you going to do? What are they going to do? And I'm just like, are oh, you the guy who's argument. never really been in a lot of trouble? I, I said, I just had fucking cops like, like run my car for like just rip everything out of it for just to be like assholes. Like, I never felt that. Just like a cop's going to be like, what are you doing? All right, put it out. Get out of here, you little idiot. You know, I've never had that. I've, I've got like they're going to do the whole whatever process they wanted to do to me. My friend do to me. Eric is like that. Eric is very oblivious because er Eric didn't really. I, I don't think that he believed my past when I met him. So we we going to um, New Orleans for uh, Atlanta for this little comedy thing. Is um, Dave Lawson, and Keisha Hunt and some other comics in the car. And Eric, we get pulled over in Louisiana on I ten, and I just I just say, hey. um Y'all get ready to get out this car. And they was like, what for what? Yeah, why? So the man, because he took everybody's ID. And I said, um, when he runs my ID, we're going to have to get out this car. So Eric was like, man, man, you ain't look. What, stop what it. Ollie, stop it. That's You're how he was. You're being fucking crazy, man. Two minutes later, the man takes me out the car first. Can can you step out the car? I said, I said yeah, no hey. problem. Then he gets all of them out the car and isolates us. Away they they together then it's me, and I said Dave, the dogs are coming, no. and he was like no they not Eric is still like man what is he gonna do it's nothing boom three squad cars pull up K nine unit and I'm like hey man, I sold a lot of drugs yeah on this I ten sir I said this is a I had a real life this is this is they're going to strip this car down they're going to go through this car like crazy. The man took my bags away from their bags. The whole spill. Didn't have anything on. I knew comics. He ain't got nothing yeah. on. But he's like, yo, man. He told them. It, we wouldn't have done none of that if you wouldn't have had this man in the car. He said, because as soon as it came up, it had drug trafficker uh, on the thing. So like, they're like, well, this guy. I got busted with five kilos of dope. But they're on I-10. They're yeah. going to search. <laughs> yeah, they looked up my history. It's like a radio DJ reading your bio when yeah. you're in the studio. Hey, it turns out uh, Ali Sadiq's going to be here all week and uh, five kilos of dope on I-10. We're going to pull that out of the car. I remember uh, a bunch of comics going from Philly to New York for a show one time and one of the comics was just always in some shifty stuff in Philadelphia and it was a stolen car for sure. And one of the comics in the car was complaining right away. He was like, he was like, dude, because this, this kid, it was, it was Michael Black, you know Michael Black. He's, yeah, he's like one stole the car, but Michael Black, the African king of yeah. comedy. Yeah. Um, Michael Blackson was in the car too, and he was complaining early on. He was like, hey, is this car like, is this right? Because this dude's always in this. He was the guy like, would you give him a hundred bucks, he would take care of your cell phone bill for you, type yeah. shit. Yeah. Back when cell phone bills would be like eight hundred dollars, and you didn't know why. <laughs> yeah. you used it during the day once. And uh, <laughs> you used it during the day, <laughs> day once. Day one time. Yeah, and and. They got pulled over and everything was going bad and every they made everybody get down on the ground. Kevin Hart, I believe, was in the car too. Like no one knew. It was, it was one bad apple. This group, but uh, everyone's on the ground with their hands behind their head, like getting read the riot act. And Michael Black keeps getting up and they're yelling at him to get down. And he just keeps trying to plead with the cop. He was so scared. He's like, "No!" So he goes, "I'm Michael Black, the African king of comedy." He's like, going, <laughs> he's like telling him all these things. Like, Beat these comics, you half hour special. They only gave out two half hour specials on Beat these. <laughs> And he's just like screaming. He's the African king of combo. Cops are just screaming at him. To get, get down, down on the ground! Get like, down on the ground! He was like wearing his dashiki for his show. Sir, get down on the ground! Put the dashiki down! Put the dashiki down! Hands up, buddy! You gotta spread your legs. I don't know what you got in there. Uh, you got an insurgent <laughs> over here. Uh, sir, I am the I am the African king of comedy. Put your fucking hands down! Put your fucking uh, hands down! Uh, we just looked up African king comedy. His story checks out. You can let him go. He is. He is, in fact, the uh, comedy king. Was in fact in. Friday part two for uh, 55 seconds. Um, sir, and story checks out. You can let him go. I just imagine them holstering their guns. Sir, I just want to say to you, first and foremost, I apologize. <laughs> Mr. Uh, King, King Blackson, if it's all right with me calling you that. <laughs> if you're okay with that. <laughs> sir, if that's all right if I call you that, King Blackson, uh, thank you. I'm sorry for this. Ali, uh, you got to come back and hang out with us again Man, soon, my friend. Any 
time, man. You guys. Are- we didn't get into your whole crazy story and stuff from you, oh, which, yeah, well, which was a great teaser for it there with that story, but we it definitely is, want to have you back. The new album, Damaged Goods, comes out on Friday, which is the same day as his half-hour special on Comedy Central. So make sure you uh, DVR it at midnight. Ali Sadiq. Damage Goods, the album, and the special. Thanks for coming by, dude. Really man, appreciate thank it. Y'all, man. Big J going to be on the Oddball Comedy Festival. Go to oddballfest.com. He's going to be in uh, Texas, Arizona, and California. And then also download his hour special live at Webster Hall on iTunes and other platforms. Dan Soder special, not special, still available on all those same platforms. Mm-hmm. Kicking ass. I mean, I don't know if they have any left. They probably sold out. <laughs> That's sure how they, good it's doing. I'm sure they have. Uh, and also, Dan's going to be at Big Hunt in Washington, D.C. Friday, September 23rd, and Saturday, September 24th. Get your tickets at dansoder.com. And, uh, dude, this has been a fun week. Fucking, uh, you know, the crash... I really t- fucking enjoyed it. Crash this, test dummies, dude. The crash, and, crash test dummies cease and assist. We we'll got fight. a cease and desist today. We'll fight through it. We'll, fi- we'll find another way. We'll, we'll, keep, uh, we'll keep fighting. We'll talk to you guys on Monday. It's the bonfire.